Welcome back to Kind of Funny Star Wars in Review. That's right, we are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Star Wars cinematic universe. Uh, we just wrapped up the Terminator Cameron verse in review. Terminator 1, Terminator 2, Terminator Dark Fate. So you can watch all of those or listen to those however you get this show. That's a fun thing. You that was do. a fun one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but today we are talking about Star Wars. Every week we gather here, me, Andy, Kevin, Nick, Barrett's over there on the boards. Would you call us the Jedi Council? No. Sure. Cool. Can sure. I be the guy with the really, really tall head? Yeah. Yeah. The one that Andy Dick played one time in like an MTV VMA parody? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> was that a little Jack Black in it? I don't know. It was him playing maybe. as Obi Wan. <laughs> the guy at the end Possible. of this the guy at the end of this movie that didn't keep up with his with his lightsaber training and just got murked by like four. You mean like all clones. of them? Oh my god. So, that so was, many useless. That's a Jedi. good. Se- well, it's, I mean, not they're useless. They we'll get don't. there. We'll get there. Uh, you can watch this show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You can watch it later as a video on youtube.com slash kind of funny. You can listen to it as a podcast. Podcast services around the globe. Just search for kind of funny reviews. And if Rooster Teeth's more your thing, guess what? That's an option too. Uh, if you want to help support us and make cooler and more things happen, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to get the show ad free, just like Patreon producer Al Tribesman did. Daddy boy. The Predator is alone now. The mind I know, freak. it's sad. The Mind wow. Freak. Wow. Season but four. The mind, shout out to the Mind Freak, though. The greatest because... magic trick of all. Well, so well like, here's, here's oh, what I'll say. Oh. I'll say at the end of season three, that's where the Mind Freak sort of like goes into hiding and you think he's dead. You don't dead. think the Predator won? Yeah, I, I think you th- No, no, no. They're teammates. They weren't Oh, fighting. are they? I thought they were no, fighting. They were teammates. I thought he was like, doing magic tricks. They were fighting also. No, no, no. Like a team up. No, the Mind Freak is just gone for the time being and you think that he's dead, right? But maybe Mind Freak pops back up season six. I will say shout out to the Mind Freak. When you guys were gone, I think he gave $1,500 to Afterlife. Yeah. So good for him. Holy crap. So he's trying to save those kids. Instead of my waistline. Thank you, man. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Today, we are talking about Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. Uh, Released on May 19th, 2005. I was a junior in high school. Where were you guys? 2005? Mm -hmm. I was a year older, I guess. Yeah. Younger, uh, Tim. I was also a junior in high school. So you were a senior in high school. Wait, this was June 2000? (laughs) May. Did you say you were also oh, 2005? Like, <laughs> no, you weren't a junior. I, I was wasn't. a junior. We were we were I'm wrapping up the we were wrapping up the school year. So think about what grade did you start in 2004? I graduated 06. Wow, okay. I was a sophomore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that I, makes sense. Remember I said you were a senior. I was in The point that I was trying to make <laughs> is I remember going to the theaters like with my friends to see this one. I'd yeah. seen the previous ones with my family. Mm. This was my first Star Wars experience. Interesting. By myself. You know what? I didn't even see this one in theaters. Wow. wow. I was like so crestfallen. Yeah. But then I remember my dad buying it on DVD, and it was like one of the first HD movies we saw on Blu-ray. And it was uh, it was cool. I, was like, wow. I, I, I think I saw all of these at, uh, I, I mean, I definitely saw all of them in theaters. I saw Phantom Menace at Edwards, the, big, the, the biggest screen in Southern California, which is like this giant screen in Newport Beach. And then I think I, like, I, that was the one I waited. I didn't even know for. how the screen got there. And after that, I was like, I'm never camping out for another Star Wars movie ever again because this was such a. It took you to this, till this one to, to do No, no, that, that was Phantom Menace. And then Sorry, I think yeah, Attack yeah. of the Clones, and I think uh, this one I probably saw in either Irvine Spectrum or The Block and Orange. I was like, I don't give a shit. We'll just find tickets and <laughs> yeah. on, like normal. Let's go two weeks. I, I definitely saw them because like, this is all we had. We didn't have Marvel movies. It was either this or those X Men movies with. Wolverine that had a really bad wig. Or Daredevil with Ben Affleck. Oh, God. Or Catwoman. <laughs> you know what a crazier thing, though, thinking about this? is Because I remember leaving episode one, being a dumb little kid. I was nine. And being just so stoked about the sequels. Being like, oh, my God. We're going to see Anakin turn Sorry. bad. Like, this is so fucking exciting. Yeah. And there were three-year gaps between each of these movies. Like, mm. the way movies are made now, it's like, that's that. imagine if it was three years of. between Marvel movies. No, you know? yeah, that's I know. insane. Well, we, we got two years between Star Wars movies, right? Two years. Yeah, that's the, but it, but it wasn't that. supposed to be. Also, not really be... two years with the uh, uh, Star Wars every one year. and yeah. Solo. Like this year, kind of got messed up. But a like, whole three hundred sixty-five days extra, Kevin. It's crazy. I'm I just so want to say I was in fourth grade when this uh, movie came out. Did you? And do you see it in theaters? Oh yeah, I remember seeing it with my dad, and we were yeah. both really stoked. We both really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so directed by George Lucas once again, uh, the final one. He nailed this one. A budget of $113 million. <laughs> no. Box office of $848.8 million. Runtime of two hours and 20 minutes. Before we get into any fun stuff, let me, may the facts be with you. There's some cool stuff here. Uh, this one's just pretty funny. So there was a leaked work print that happened. Uh, the day that the movie came out, somebody in the industry actually leaked 
the movie. So do you know what I'm talking about? What a work print is? Yeah, where it's it, like, it doesn't have the effects in it. You, it's not that. It's it's like it's the movie, but you see the time code. Oh on yeah, it and sure, stuff. Sure. So it's like it was clear that it wasn't somebody like taping it. It was like DVD quality, and like immediately it was out. And it was a big problem. They got found. They got you know sued, killed, put in jail, yeah, killed. Who the hell knows? Um, George but Lucas cut Kathleen their head off. just came up. <laughs> Pop. Uh, what gets there. interesting about this is <laughs> so she got the job. Yeah. Shortly <laughs> after <laughs> the above mentioned print was leaked, it was released in Shanghai as a bootleg DVD with Chinese subtitles. The reason I'm bringing this up is this has a lot of uh, Fast and Furious, the Wild Chase, oh. hyper combo, whatever vibes. Uh, the unknown producer of this DVD also chose to include English subtitles, which were in fact translated back into English from the Chinese translation, <laughs> rather than using the original English script script. This resulted in the subtitles being heavily mistranslated, often causing unintentional humor. For example, in the opening crawl, the title is mistranslated as Star War, The Third Gathers, The Backstroke of the West. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> One error that recurs several times in the subtitles right. is that the phrase, it seems, was rendered as Good Elephant. <laughs> Jedi Council is rendered as uh, Presbyterian Church. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. And yeah. the mistranslation caused the word fuck to replace work. Four times in the subtitles. Darth Vader's cry of no is rendered as do not want. Which <laughs> <laughs> is better, I think. Yeah, yeah, so, so do so not want. thought that was a, a fun one to start this off. What did we think about Revenge of the Sith? Kevin, we'll start with you. Um, Man, I remember being like, hey, Revenge of the Sith is the best they could do with what they had. And, you know, maybe that's true. But I'm going to be honest, they still didn't do great. Rewatching it, I was just like, "It's not, it's not great. It's not a great movie. Uh, there's a lot of really bad. I can't believe that I think so highly of Ewan, Ewan, e- Ewan McGregor. I mean, I just watched Doctor Sleep, and he's really good in it. But like, not these movies. In none of these movies am I like, he's good. And again, that's probably the director's fault. I think he has moments. Barry, can you hear me? Yeah, this is good. Um, this movie for. For the first two thirds of it, I was like, I don't know what the hell everyone's talking about. This is boring as shit. This might be the worst of them. But when you get to the end, I think he and to some degree Hayden Christian do a fairly good job of actually having some a small amount of emotion when they get to the end when he's like, you were the best of like that scene where he's standing there and they're about to square off. While terribly blocked and cheesy, and everything that leads up to that should have been so much better. They at least have a couple moments where I'm like, oh, I but I. I kind of believe that there's actually tension here between these two people. And I think the last two, I think the last act of the movie is relatively fun to watch until we get to the Frankenstein part. And then I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. But I think this has, I think this has a lot more going for it than I initially gave it credit for. That's not to say it's good. Um, Yeah, I'm a lot, I kind of agree with Kevin and Nick a lot where I, I remember this movie being a lot better than it was uh, upon rewatching it. Now, the later sort of the final quarter of it, maybe the last third. I won't say the last third because I feel like it just kind of happens at the very, very end. That's where it starts to pick up. But throughout most of it, like throughout a lot of the beginning scenes, which I remember being fun and cool, were just really badly done. There's a lot of awkward humor and bad pacing and terrible writing and... Uh, uh, activate the ray shield. Ray shields. Ray shields. Like it's oh, no. so. All of this is ray so shields. so like, bad. We know. Um, like I just said it. It's Let's really it three more times. It's really, shield. really, really badly done. Um, and it wasn't until Order sixty six happens that I that the movie starts kind of like getting, you know, intriguing. And that's uh, that. I remember watching those all those betrayals and being like, whoa, this is really really cool. And it. It kind of hurts. It breaks your heart, uh, and mm-hmm. I felt the same way watching it again. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think that those are the moments where you're like, "Oh, there's actually some some emotion in this." Yeah, and and that's and that I think they're actually fairly decently directed. <clears throat> like, there's that there's a great shot where they start shooting. I forget. I don't know if it's Ahsoka or whatever the girl's name is, but no, like yeah. underneath the leaf, and, and then it yeah. kind of pulls back as you see all the shots go in her, but you don't see her body. I'm like, that's that's actually yeah. pretty cool. It's kind of sad. I I had always defended this movie yeah. as being not yeah. that bad. And I feel like a lot of that is nostalgia, and a lot of that's just wanting to really like elements of the prequels. And rewatching it, I'm with you guys, where it's like it, it is that bad. It's bad, but it's a bad movie. But I, yeah, it is a bad movie, but it is enjoyable in a way that I think one and two aren't. I think mm. parts of it are enjoyable. I think the last, the last act of it is enjoyable because it's sad, 
and it's 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 a uh, it's uh, which call it a tragedy rather at the end of it. Similar to how you like when that feel that weird sad feeling at the end of Empire, you almost get that here. It just sucks because going into it, you just don't give a shit about any of the characters. And I didn't realize until I watched this again, like the biggest uh, uh, the tragedy of it all is that they literally took Padme's character. And just threw her into the trash. Threw her into the fucking not trash. Not that she had. She a, does nothing. In nothing. This. Absolutely not. Except brush her hair, or brush her curls with and get uh, choked. With a brush. Yeah, they took but, a character that they were trying to set up to be Princess Leia, and then throughout the next three movies, they just turn her into like the only thing she does is has is have the two twins. That's yeah, it. and then die. Well, I, and then I die. feel like in it's one so and sad. two, she plays a more pivotal role. It is this movie that is just like she's that's just what we're hanging saying. out there. Yeah, okay. Like that's the problem. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. The, Any character development at all is just thrown out the window because they're like, "Fuck, I guess we should finally care about Obi Wan and Anakin's relationship because right. we need to for this movie to work." But I think that this is the most enjoyable throughout. I again, it's not good. But I feel like it works more than the first two, and the the problem with that though is I think that scene for scene there's there's more elements and things Bless I like you. about this one than there is about one and two. One, we've talked about the pod racing, we talked about dual the face, we've talked about just random elements that I, that I've enjoyed. I feel like there are more things like that in this one, mm-hmm. but none of them hit the point of being good. Every like. It's like, oh, well, I, I kind of oh, like Anakin I, and Obi-Wan's relationship. I kind of like the final battle. I kind of like Order 66. I kind of like Grievous. I kind of like, there's a lot of things that I kind of like, but they ne- none of them are actually good. I think that the, the fall of the Jedi Order is good. That being said, it would have been so much better and stronger had they developed, like, had we spent a little bit more time with these characters in one and two, you know? The, yeah. The, Where it's like, we, uh, like, it's... Tragic because we know that like oh they have a like relationship with these people that are killing them and like it comes out of nowhere. Had we actually seen that relationship, it would have hit much harder. And it's just like that's bad storytelling when you don't think of and set that up beforehand. I feel like just looking at the final battle with the two of them, it's mm-hmm. like it's undeniably cool as a concept, sure. visually, a lot of things going with one Nick things, a lot of really bad blocking and like the fight is awkward as hell. Um, but it's like we, when we put our own thoughts into it, we make it cooler than it actually is. Oh yeah, you know, and because the problem is, why like Anakin and Obi Wan's relationship, we don't believe it at all based on what they set up. No, but we are putting in what we know from a New Hope, what we know going forward, and we make it better than it is. Like there's one part where he screams, "We were brothers," and I was like, "We didn't really see that. We at saw all. a really weird antagonistic mentor mentee relationship that." We didn't. I, I like. I was watching. Go, I don't want brother. any part of this. Well, I don't even want to be a part of. Anakin this thing. turned on Obi Wan last movie. Yeah, and it's like they just kind of just just move forward. They, and they don't start like this, this one off, and they're like, I oh, don't know. Now you, you guys are well, just back. His turn. It's a weird is, reset. His turn is so dramatic when he he literally goes from like, oh, I'm I'm gonna shoot like, I'm gonna you know cut off uh, Mace Windu's arms, and to like I'm gonna kill a bunch of little kids. Yeah. And they're like, that's crazy. Yeah, yellow eyes now. Yeah. Yeah. So all right, let's uh let's get to the plot. Hold on one sec, Barrett. How are we looking? We'll see. Can I take a break for a sec? I don't know if they can hear me or not. Hold on a sec, everyone. I will uh, give you just take yeah. my mic, bro. Check, 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 check. Hello, yeah. hello. All Better? Right, all right. In the opening sequence, when the second Separatist ship is destroyed, a piece of debris flies into the clone Star Destroyer that shot it. That piece of debris is a kitchen sink. It was put there by ILM as a joke from someone saying, we're throwing everything in the sequence, including the kitchen sink. Interesting. Mm. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to give... Is there a song? No, man. Plot. Plot, 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 plot. Man. Revenge of the Sith starts, of course, with the scroll. War! Exclamation mark. <laughs> The Republic yeah. is crumbling under the attack. When I saw that, Nick, I went, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> oh, no, I didn't know. It scared me. <laughs> uh, the Republic is crumbling under attacks by the ruthless Sith Lord, Count Dooku. There are heroes on both sides, is what it says. It's a weird statement. What does that mean? Weird <laughs> fucking statement. There, b- FYI, there are heroes on both sides. That's like when Trump was like, oh, the neo-Nazis? There, there's heroes on... <laughs> good Everyone's people. to blame on this one. <laughs> good people, man. Are there? Good, they're just good people. <laughs> they just hate the Jews. All right. Uh, and, then, and then it goes, evil is everywhere. All right, so there's heroes on both sides, and there's evil everywhere. <laughs> huh. Okay. Uh, but also, all of them real good. Yeah. But most of them terrible. But bad. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I understand what he was trying to do with this, right? This is, the, the in the bigger picture for me, is what I think George Lucas was trying to get across, which they touched on a little bit. There are gray areas. In 
uh, uh, The Last Jedi, which is there are gray areas. Like, he was trying to build up, I think, a better storyteller would have crafted it so that the Jedi weren't exactly the best thing. Like, there was, yeah, there was a murky gray area, right? But I just don't think he got that across mm-hmm. in this. And it's especially confusing when you have literally contradicting terms in the first three sentences of the movie. Anyway, in a stunning move, the fiendish droid leader, uh, no, not Newt's gun rays, not Dooku, not Sidious, and certainly not Pago the Lesser, General Grievous. You remember General, General Grievous, Grievous is here, yeah, dude. right? Uh, has kidnapped a the character Chancellor. introduced in a animated series that is now no longer canon. Yeah, a character well, introduced in the scroll for this movie. Yeah, you have to be responsible for bringing in all of your own elements into this movie to make it a good movie. Okay, mm-hmm. if it's if it was in a comic book, you're supposed to bring the comic book in and read it right as the previews are going, right. and then watch the movie. Everyone knows that. As the Separatist armies attempts to flee, two Jedi's uh, lead a desperate mission to rescue the captive Chancellor. I'll give you two guesses as to who those two Jedi's are. That's right, Obi Wan and Anakin head to General Grievous's ship, and, and they get into it with some enemy uh, fighters, and their entire squad is just wiped out real quick. And it doesn't matter anyway because it's played by the same actor, literal clones that we couldn't give ten shits about. So why bother anyway? Uh, Obi Wan gets hit with some buzz droids and Anakin shoots them off but it doesn't help instead he tries to smash them off uh, of his wing and one gets on his ship and R2 takes care of it fucking force them off force grab them and just fuck them well, go, go away to do. Go uh, away. I don't understand that <laughs> they blast their way I know they're right there like two feet away from <laughs> just, him you, know, you, got the force. you can't force through glass it's true no. you push the glass <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> they blast their way into Lee Chip, and Obi Wan uh, has a bad feeling about it. Of course, uh, they crash land and uh, easily take out all the droid soldiers that they encounter. Uh, tell and they tell R two to locate the Chancellor. He finds them on the observation platform, uh, and they sense Dooku and they sense a trap. And he goes, "Well, guess what? Let's go spring the trap then." And Anakin's like. No, that's not what that means. Yeah. If we spring the trap, they spring the trap on us. And he's like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We have an elevator to get in because yeah. that's all we could do together. That does, exactly. Uh, so R2 stays with the ship, of course, uh, and they head to the observation platform where we see General Grievous and his emphysema. Uh, Obi-Wan <laughs> and Anakin get trapped in the elevator. Uh, they call R2 like Luke did that one time, but R2 can't uh, call back because he has to hide from bad guys like he did that one time. Uh, remember? Remember those movies? This is an homage. Dude. Uh, we, do we get the General Grievous right away, or do we, isn't it Count Dooku and then General Grievous comes in after Dooku is killed? I don't know. I just. Oh, I put by the way, all this is just there. real bad. Then Anakin flips out of the elevator, and R two burns some droids alive, and then <laughs> all of this entire scene should have been cut out. But again, like the rope, like these these bigger menacing, more menacing robots. Like, huh, what was that noise? Huh? Hey, what are you doing? Wait, was what that you? Oh, yeah, there was nothing. Ignore it. Like, why here. are there English? Fuck, why is there this. English fuck this, so man. bad? Where it's like me not worry. Uh, yeah. Apart from providing the voice of R2-D2 and the heavy breathing of Darth Vader, which he's done since episode four, uh, Ben Burt provided the voices for every battle droid, super battle droid, and buzz droid in Revenge of the Sith. So, interesting. Thank you, Ben. Uh, they, the <laughs> Jedi head up to the observation deck where they just find Palpatine strapped down, no one guarding him whatsoever, just by himself. Uh, and then Dooku comes in there, and they, sp- I guess, to spring the trap. Uh, but this time, Obi Wan and Anakin decide we're going to do this together because last time we got fucking housed. But it doesn't matter because Anakin has this great throwaway line where he's like, "You know what, though? You're not going to take me this time because the- since the last time we saw each other, my powers have doubled." Fuck and Anakin's like, yeah. "Have they? Like, how do you measure that, bro? You mean like Dooku. that's a- like, or Kevin? Kevin would be like, D- doubled." Or the double? Well, they, they checked this midichlorian count. It's like, oh, yeah. shit, it's twice as high. Double the pride, twice anyway. the fall. Remember the midichlorians? Yeah, exactly. Well, they mentioned him again. This uh, They fight, and Obi-Wan gets fucking ragged all, like all Harry of, Potter when he fought the troll in Sorcerer's Stone. All of this is kind of really weirdly done. Uh, it's this, terribly done. This, this fight, because I, I, what I noticed, I, I, I set my timer, and 40 seconds goes by in this fight until a music cue starts. And it's when like Obi-Wan gets pushed, and it kind of awkwardly comes in. But for forty seconds, it's just like vroom, they're, vroom, they're fighting. Vroom, but like vroom. you would, you would expect like, oh, this is where the intensity ratchets up, mm-hmm. and it's just, it's just fighting for forty seconds, and then you know Obi Wan gets flown, and then it kind of it starts kind of popping in here. What's and there. crazy is like we'll have to do this together, and like forty seconds later, Obi Wan's out of commission, yeah. fucking things on him, it's dude, like, and that thing on him. That would that have broken have him in him. half. Yeah, should have like, definitely. W- that looked so much more visceral than it ended up being. Like in CG, they throw him down. The thing goes on him and kind of like, <laughs> yeah, against the floor. Mini chlorine. And then later it comes ca- back and it's just a thing on him. You got a lot of calcium in your bones. Real strong bones. Mm. Uh, and then Anakin, but Anakin's power is doubled, so he pretty much has no trouble uh, taking Lord Dooku's uh, d- uh, 
a lightsaber from him and gets him kneeling on the ground. Dude. And then he has the two things there. And then Sidious is like, do it. <laughs> do it. And he's like, really? really? Shout outs to the way he like removed this, both his hands bit. at once. That was the, the, fucking the, rad. The choreography of that and like getting him in the position. It's a perfect example of what I was saying earlier of everything that's good is just not quite good enough. Well, the problem is this. This scene should have led us into the third act of this movie. This should have been the last thing he did to finish his transition as the dark as as the apprentice of the Dark Lord, right? But it's not. It's the fucking first thing that I happens liked in this it being movie. The beginning. I also it's like terrible. It, being it the should beginning. have literally been like he's killing the guy whose job he's taking. It should have been his final thing he had to do to transform. Like that should have been the last bit of humanity he had left because he fucking decapitates a guy. And yeah, the problem but- is once you do that, you are no longer a sympathetic character to the audience, right? He is the main, he's one of the main characters. We're supposed to believe that we're still like he's still struggling. He just decapitated a guy for no fucking reason. But I mean, he, he also cut his hands off beforehand. I th- I feel like he did have a reason in the sense that like, and it's funny because like I feel like this is actually a cool moment where uh, Sidious kind of changes the narrative where he's like he's he's too dangerous to just keep alive. Like you you need to kill him because we gotta get the fuck out of here, right? Like that. I feel like that's why he killed him. And then afterwards, Sidious is like. You killed him for revenge. And it's like, that's not why he killed him. He killed him because, like, they need to get the fuck out of here and they got to make sure he's dead. So so there's something interesting there uh, about the revenge bit is uh, in the battle duel with Dooku, the imprisoned Palpatine originally had more dialogue when she was to shout at Anakin. One of his lines pertained to episode two in which Palpatine exposed Dooku as paying the Tusken Raiders to kidnap, torture, and kill Anakin's mom. Which brings in the the revenge part. Interesting. But wasn't in the movie. Well, the revenge <laughs> part, I assumed, was him cutting off his arm or hand. But it's just mm. it's all really sad because they've taken Dooku, who could have been a cool character, and they've taken Darth Maul, who could have been a cool character, and instead of making them actual like strong antagonists for like to bounce off of the protagonist and had and had some fun stuff there, they just they're just fodder. Everyone's just fodder. Grievous fodder. They're so recyclable. And just <laughs> and it sucks because they, the, it's there's such a thin line between a good like a good bad guy and a, and just a generic person and they didn't even Lucas didn't even give a shit. He was just like we're going to sell this toy. It's well, with great. the exception of Darth Vader in this series, I feel like that's what happens to all the bad guys. It's sad. Yeah, including uh Tarkin where it's just like But I would say like in future spoilers, right? Well, let's, but like yeah. we've got some other characters coming up that I think are actually like slightly more it's complex. the best, I would Yeah, say. and I think it's kind of cool to see that that gray area and when those but we can keep going ladies and gentlemen uh they fight anakin and has a lot of hate which is cool and he cuts and we kill <laughs> double him. the hate he's all about, he's all about that hate double and hate double the fun Pal- uh, palpatine has palpatine has a great moment <laughs> in here where they really should have cut out but they cut over to him he's like <laughs> 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 ah, yeah like it's like he's jacking oh, off to I, a sports game dude that, that was fucking weird I but when, when he, I, I like he's first it. in the room and like shit's getting like they're, they're, he's being protected by the Jedi. I guess it's right after this. Yeah. But he's just... Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I like him getting into it and being like, oh, look at them. They're helping me. Yeah. Whatever. Get him, get him. Uh, anyway, Palpatine tells Anakin they don't have time to save Obi-Wan. And Anakin's yeah. like, why? There's literally... It's quiet in here. There's nothing happening. Good. There is no tension whatsoever in this scene. It's not like we're seeing the shit outside. It's just... He's like, we don't have time for that. He's like... I, mean, I think we do. Yeah. <laughs> and we have time to get lunch, too. There's fucking nothing happened. We just killed <sighs> everyone. We're fine. We could literally radio, but like, we killed them. We're done. It's cool. It don't matter. Anyway. Yeah, um, I, I think they do cut to the outside, and the ship is like literally falling CG into garbage. The <laughs> no, that, well, they, have, they have to CG. fight. They have to fight Grievous first, I think. Uh, right. Palpatine tells Anakin they don't have time, but Obi Wan, because uh, the ship is under attack or something, and it doesn't matter. Uh, the ship loses gravity. Wait, they fought Grievous in here somewhere, didn't they? Yeah, they. they Oh, they're about to. Yeah, because right. they're, they're going to the, like the the upper part. Oh, that's right. The ship loses gravity and they fall down an elevator shaft. But thankfully, they have their grappling hook, so they're fine. They get caught in the ray shields, uh, which they say like fifteen times, so you know they're ray shields. <laughs> which is so good because remember all the ray shields from yeah. never. They've never <laughs> fucking said these before. Yeah. So luckily, the ray they're shields. They're in Halloween eight, whatever. Activ- uh, activate the ray shields and then <laughs> ray shields. <laughs> it's so like. But it's funny how that they weren't like <laughs> how could we cut our way out or you know, like. Cut the ground. And then Obi-Wan goes, we're smarter than this. How did this happen to us? <laughs> like, it's such a stupid fucking moment, man. But it's so yeah. bad. Uh, they're brought to Grievous on the bridge, and it looks like they're really going to get it this time, but they have no problem escaping with relative ease. Uh, and another lightsaber battle uh, ensues, and it's fun and goofy. Because who doesn't want tension or any tension in their scenes? It doesn't matter. Outnumbered General Grievous decides, fuck it. I'm just going to blow out a window and jettison myself into space. Uh, <laughs> 
That was true. I cool. thought it was cool until you realized you're like, wait a minute. He has emphysema, which means he has real lungs, which means how the fuck is he existing <laughs> yeah, in the he, in the vacuum of space? You got to imagine he's got a little air compartment somewhere that like doesn't compress because air. literally later we just see him pry open the little shell of a fucking armor sure. and see his exposed lungs there. And his dick. <laughs> like his <laughs> fat lit <laughs> dick. And you're like, can you get that thing up anymore? He's like, <laughs> like uncircumcised. I haven't been able to. Oh, oh already. So wow. Early. wow. So it's been a while. Early. It it is, yeah, missed you on the last couple of these. <laughs> yeah, we are. Okay, yeah. Watch out for the lights in your hair. <laughs> it's been a long time. Oh, man. He comes to me. It's been a Face so smooth, eh? no, no, please. Like Why are your hands so cold? Like a young Annie. <laughs> <laughs> like a young Annie. My nipples are so hard right now. So thanks, thanks, uh, Water. Nah, I didn't want to be on the last two shows because I'm in the movie. Eh? Oh, you were busy I in the know. movies, so you weren't here. But Water, yeah. you, you filmed that yeah. movie over two decades ago. <laughs> 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 nah, see, Watto, you believe in democracy, eh? You know, uh, you yes. can't, you can't. As a slave owner, can't. democracy is the most important thing to Watto, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you can't want <laughs> exactly. You can't You got me, you got me on that one. I want even, I want a fair vote for episode one and two, eh? So you tell me. What? You tell me anyway. Where, where, where episode one and two in the rankings? One? Uh, Two? Yeah, they're Two way three? they're way up there. Water they're at way least way top up five. Up. They're top five. Way what? up there. They're in the top five. <laughs> Whoa. You got the rankings up right now. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. You put me in the movie. You put me in the bottom of the list. Yeah, they're way down there. Water. Mm -hmm. Sorry, man. Oh. Sorry, man. <laughs> the, the, the progression is small boy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Character. Character. Small, small pumpkin to big pumpkin. Yeah. Kill all the people. She still want to fuck. Yeah. 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 She has no scruples she whatsoever in this movie. What you kids want in movies? I don't know. What's crazy Thanks, is Lana. this is offensive to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No matter how small I get, I never forget this. Eh? Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, alluded. Oh, well, uh, yeah. What's foreshadowing right there? But what's what's the minimal Watch amount no of uh, spoilers? How small can you get, Watto? Do we know? Or are we not ready? <laughs> when I least expect it. God, the math sucks. <laughs> what's funny is I. It's he's been on the show what three times now? Five. I probably. just realized that when I'm looking him in the eyes, mm -hmm. I'm looking in the mask size. Yeah. <laughs> have his you eyes noticed, are just a little below it. His eyes a lot of the time. Closed because yeah. of where the, the actual eyes. <laughs> yeah. It's so disturbing. He's using the force to hear that voice with his eyes closed. Also, oh. quick question: Am I am I crazy or does Watto have a bat symbol shaved into his chest? <laughs> <laughs> really interesting. Really crazy. You're mixing a lot of. Speaking things of there. General Grievous here, uh, Gary Oldman had agreed to be the voice of that General Grievous, uh, but pulled what out of the film because it was being made using actors who are not part of the Screen Actors Guild, of which Oldman's a member, so he can't do it. The role was led. Read by Duncan Young on set and finally voiced by Matthew Wood, who, being a Lucasfilm employee, submitted his reading under the name of Alan Smithy. Mm, Car Smithy. Carboni told us a little facts about that, how like he had to do all the voices without effects, and or he did them with effects, and they're like, oh, cool, now do them without all the different like voice modulation shit. So what like apparently he could do a perfect Grievous without any of like the the weird modulation on his like. On his, I don't hmm. know, voice box. The perfect Do you like grief. how much he coughed? Coughed a lot, huh? Yeah. It's <laughs> about buterol or something. Yeah. I like. I, I thought it gave it a character. You know? Yeah. No. I'm. I'm, this guy, I'm with that. This weird robot monster man coughs. At this point, we're accepting. <laughs> At this, yeah, seriously. At this point, we're accepting a robot that coughs as character. As, You're like, yeah, because <laughs> he was like this. He was like, he's not interesting enough. What should Great. we do? And the writer was like, I don't know. Maybe introduce him two films ago. Write a really intricate backstory. Or give him some really good motivations for why he's That's doing what he's doing. We don't have Put time him for that. Directly at odds, diametrically opposed to the main character, but actually make him a sympathetic bad guy too. What about a cough? Yeah, we'll go with the cough. <laughs> we'll go with, Let's the, just cough. Go with the cough. How about that? That makes sense. Uh, outnumbered Grievous sides blow itself out the window, and that's actually kind of a cool scene. Uh, and then half the ship breaks apart, but it's okay. We've got the other half. Uh, and instead of getting out of there in a fun sequence where they could have like escaped again, they just kind of 
easily pilot the rest of the ship down to the the to Coruscant. And, and he's a really good pilot. I really and love he's this the best pilot. I really love this one line that I had to write down just because the voice actor was so weird. It was like one of the gu- the viceroy looking dudes, the gun race. Yeah, where it's like they're like in a green, and he's like. Oh, batteries, fire, fire. And it's like, how? Like, who voice? This? <laughs> what did he what? say? Uh, no, he says, uh, well, he has two different lines. One of them, he goes, Oh, batteries, fire, fire. Another one, he goes, Magnetize, magnetize. Oh, yeah. But I like, remember why, these moments. Why that voice? I don't get it, man. <laughs> but it, this, wasn't this also one of those lines where it's like, Someone, uh, oh, and then the, the droid's like, magnetize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so like, all right, cool. Jesus Christ. What did that do? I don't know. See, uh, RTD2 got covered in, and, uh, like, droids. <laughs> right? I don't know, it's like, man. cool. Later on, they deliver Palpatine back to the Senate, safe and sound, and Obi-Wan tell he, and Anakin's like, we should, we should go with him. And Obi-Wan's like, no, you know what? You should take the credit for this one. You were the one that saved us. You should go with the politicians and take all the accolades for this. And then Anakin goes, wait a minute. I thought we were Jedi Knights. Mm-hmm. Why, a Jedi craves not these things, right? And Anakin's like, and, and Obi-Wan's like, I don't know. I don't know what our core tenets are. Are we trying to get fame and fortune with I, politicians? I, I, I think it was or Obi-Wan. What? Obi-Wan's just like, yo, you just fucking decapitated this dude. Like, hey, I want to wash my hands clean. Yeah, this. Like, this is but all like that, again, another moment where that could have been a fun Die, like a conflict moment where he's like, I'm gonna go with these, and he should have stopped his paddle on him and like, no, you don't, you don't go. We don't do this for the glory. We do this because this is the right thing. We're Jedi. But he goes, you should go with them and get all the accolades. He literally says that. You should go. It's your, you deserve well, all the credit. I, I thought cold. they were. I'm, I'm a cold. I do. You and Greg, I'm what good. is wrong with you guys? Your hands are freezing. What's up, Barrett? The vibe that I got is that neither of them want to do that. Like the vibe that I'm getting is like, oh. You go on and do that because this shit's dumb. And then Anakin's like, well, well I thought like, Anakin like, liked hold it. Hold on. He was yeah. like, right. what the fuck? It the, was just like. The vibe I got was that, like, Obi Wan kind of, like, is always giving Anakin a hard time. But finally, like, this was one of those moments where he's like, you know what, bro? This one's for you. You got, you know, I- I'll stay back. I, I saw it more of like a oh, you know, I, 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 hey you you get the you this time you get the gift card to Starbucks you yeah. know I don't want it this but again time. in 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 a, in a civilization or like a, a setting the Jedi are like these priests who are not allowed to have like relationships or church. any of these things <laughs> why would they be allowed to get a gift like receive gifts you know what I mean yeah. I anyway uh, we get some throwaway lines here about the, how the war is still going on and Grievous is still out there as long as Grievous is still out there you're like great thanks for telling us and then Padme is literally waiting in the shadows and no one can feel her it's Especially Obi Wan, he doesn't know she's there. Hey man, uh, we uh, are a secret marriage. Um, let's make out in public. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> wow. I, she does. She is like fucking not here, dude. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. I just killed a man. Yeah, it feels real good. <laughs> I yeah. got, uh-huh. I'm fucking horny. I got yeah, double yeah, yeah. the horniness right now, I man. Could, I could have just stabbed him in the chest, but I cut his head off, and then we didn't show this, but we kicked it around a little bit. So uh, <laughs> he's like, Hey, we got. What are you doing here? Like, we got to be real careful about this. No. Right, right. All right, and then he like re- weirdly they both kind of slip into an English accent for a second there, and then they kind of come out of it. And I was like, this maybe Carrie Fisher was right. Maybe it's just impossible to say this impossibly bad dialogue without speaking in a old English accent. I don't know. Uh, make and it then sound better. <laughs> she's like, he's like, listen, we gotta start telling, we gotta tell people about this. She's like, no, no, no we gotta still gotta keep it. Uh, or he's like, we gotta keep the secret. She's like, we're gonna have to tell someone soon because I'm pregnant. And he goes, oh, that's great. He reacts no, so poorly. No, he doesn't go. Oh, that's great. He goes, he goes oh. oh. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah. And then she goes, I don't know what we're going to do about this huge thing that could be, that could literally put us in prison. And he goes, you know what we should do? Nothing. Let's just we'll let it lie. We'll worry about it later. We'll it just really worry about it later. Matter. Kevin, I was expecting him to go, <laughs> like, look over there. The lightsaber floats up this way. Jesus. Fucking snogs her or whatever. To, Snokes to, her. To be fair, it wouldn't get them in prison. She might lose her job. As a senator, right? That's and, and she says he, that, yeah. And, and you're he like, would get kicked out. Who? What fucking patriarchy runs the entire galaxy? Where if you're pregnant, you can't be you're a senator out, dude, anymore. You're out. First off, no, I think it's more of that she's also involved in this uh, Jedi thing, Jedi and that's also like the. That's against rules. I get that, but 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 that's against the Jedi's rules. Right. It's not against her planetary rules. Where she's like, "Oh my god, if I'm caught pregnant, they'll kick me out of the Senate." I'm like. Are women like enslaved in this? And I didn't even know it the entire time. The way they set her character up is so 1940s that it's fucking ridiculous. Mm. Anyway, uh, I, I I digress. But Let's go at, back. At that to this. point, I feel like 
Anakin should have been like, you know what? Fuck the Jedi Order. Yeah, fuck them. I don't like these and guys. And like, you'll stay a senator, and I'll be your little guard, and we'll be yeah. all set. You know, it's been so easy. And together we'll rule the galaxy because you'll be president, and I'll be like the guy behind you. And anyone that fucks with you, I sneak into their room. Slash, slash, slash. Yeah, slash, slash. I'll put, anyway. some, I'll put some worms, some slugs in their room. Nitsubaba Nubaba Soba. What is it? Mitasha Joe Pasa Slimo. Uh, Grievous lands on a planet and gets a message from Sidious that the war is almost over and it's getting and he's getting a, a new apprentice that's younger and hotter than Grievous. Uh, so okay, Dooku. here's the oh, thing. younger and hotter. And it, Grievous we don't have too like, much Jedi stuff to go off in these movies, uh, even though we this is now the third one of this. Uh, but what we do know is the Jedi are like, oh man, Anakin's too young to train. All right, he's too young. He's yeah. too young. old. And uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, he's too old. And now it's like. We got a young guy. That's a good thing. Sure, the Sith might have different rules, but that's pretty fucking weird when I just feel like it contradicts the only logic they have about well, how this works. No, this I, I buy the Sith because the Sith take people and corrupt them. So that doesn't matter what age they are. Remember, because he took Deku in and was like, Who's I just cor- you just corrupt him with the dark side. That makes sense to me. That, you can penetrate anyone with the dark side at any age. I don't like it. You but then why does like, it being young matter? Like it just Oh, also, because he's, he just says he's younger and more powerful, so he's going to be here for a lot longer. Yeah. Hmm. As okay. opposed to Deku, who what is it? an 87-year-old man <laughs> with a saber that's like, you know when the dick starts to curve the wrong way? That's a, a sure sign that the elephant's going to die. I didn't know. I didn't know that. No, no, no. Let's, a, just, drop that... Let's, just, <laughs> Let's just drop it. Let's just drop it. Let's just drop it. Let's just drop it. Okay. Just move on. I can't uh, believe I said that on camera. Why did, why did Dooku not have a Darth name? He did. He, he was does. Darth, Darth Tyrannus. Tyrannus. Oh, but no right. one called him that because yeah, it was super yeah. confusing from the last film. Anyway, uh, my new apprentice is going to be there soon, and he's younger and hotter, and Grievous is all like, man, tails all the time, you know? His chest Trading is up to gorgeous. someone half your age might make you feel younger, but it won't stop you from being thrown down a massive shaft. Just FYI. So, uh, sorry, going off the old young thing, something that I, I that might have been cleared up somewhere and I missed it. Why does he not have his little rat tail anymore? I think he lost it in, like, would he not have it? I don't know. Anakin didn't have it. Nope. Uh, well, the, the show. reason that he had it is no longer canon. Wait, really? Where it was the 2D show where he uh, gets to cut it off. Um, yeah. Because no, well, that's the reason he cuts it off. You're talking about the rat's tail, right? Yeah, but yeah. the rat's tail, I think, is still canon brain, that, like, whatever. Jedi's grow it out as they're trading. Anyway, right. we get another fun scene on the balcony where Padme's pretty because she's so in love with Anakin and something or something, and Anakin is blinded by love, and that scene is useless and stupid. That night, Anakin has a dream. Dude, n- not only is that scene fucking useless, it's her standing there talking to him, and what do they talk about? They could talk about anything. Oh, of course they talk about their time on Naboo that one time. Because these movies can only remember the thing that just happened in the last movie. It doesn't matter if three years pass, ten years pass, whatever. It's like, Anakin, hey, remember the one There's, thing we I want to go back to when yeah. we were happy. It was like, were you? I don't It was like a month. There is rarely yeah, like a really a cool week. anecdote that a character tells. Like, like for example, I'm watching Watchmen on HBO. And every, like, 20 minutes is, like, a really cool, like... Well, there's this one story about blah, 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 and it's like really cool, and it's like, wow, this is really well written, and it's exactly. making me think of like, oh, what are the parallels here? None of that ever happens in these movies. Like, it's always so oh, yeah. surface level. You well, know? I mean, you're talking about the, the last episode of Watchmen where she tells the joke, and it's directly related to the things that so happen bad. in the comic nobody, book. Nobody, and then I watched an episode of BoJack Horseman where they tell that exact same joke, and I was like, what the fuck? What reality <laughs> am I living in? It was weird. Whoa. Really I literally cool. watched it a day later, and I was like, did she just tell the exact same joke? But wow. like the same concept of the I haven't joke, watched the latest episode. where they throw something out. Oh my god! Anyway, <laughs> uh, really quick, uh, the it was them trip. cutting off their uh, rat tails is a sign of them gaining knighthood. He wasn't a knight in the last one, but now he is. Yeah, he's not a master though. Right. Yeah. By the so way, I really that. regret Which not means? leaving Kevin a I'm little really rat happy tail. We didn't. Do you guys remember really in the beginning of Attack of the Clones where we start with this really exciting scene where he has to do the Jedi trials? We finally get to see those for the remember first that time. Scene is so and he cool. fails the first one and then and right for the third act where he has to go into and like and like beat the guy, he finally figures out what he needs to do to master the Jedi trials, becomes a master, and then kills Count Dooku. I think you're talking about Spider Verse. Oh, actually. maybe that's what I'm doing. Or movie. any good movie yeah. that is well written. All right. Uh let's see. Uh that night Anakin has a dream that Padme will die in, uh, die in childbirth, and then he gets up and I'll tell you one thing right now for as much shit as I have given Hit Hit Christensen rank the maps baby were they born born in labs now it's time to rank those abs. ladies and gentlemen we have a new first place here for Star Wars, uh, Hayden Christensen looked good first place really good yeah I'm even first place they were great really when I he walks out with last, role, last like, week. It was Natalie Portman. It was Natalie Portman. Yeah. You think it's better than Natalie I think Portman? Better. I mean, first of all, we're seeing more of him here, so we're getting a full picture of what he looks like. But what I like about it is he's got 
the chest, the definition mm. of the He did pecs, have a good chest. Yeah. Which is nice. And he got up. He had the 80s sort of Stallone abs where they weren't perfectly defined because he wasn't like – the steroids weren't quite as good back then as they are now. Uh, I'm going to give it to him, man. He looked good. He's uh, sexy. Sexy with the good, open yeah. robe. I'll put him at number two, but okay. Uh, you you want to go number two? I think so, I think man. he goes number one. That scene, I, Natalie Portman, it's who, the who thing is, here? we Let's, see her abs in about 15 different scenes yeah. and 15 different outfits. Yeah. And they're stunning in every single one. All right, who it's here not thinks, one shot. I, who here I, thinks that they should be number two? Raise your hands. I feel like it was he a little... He should be number two. He should be number two. Raise your hands. Who here thinks not, he think should he's, be number I one? I think he's number one. Hell yeah. There number it is. One takes number one. It. Even Barrett's in on number one. Uh, anyway, that... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Anakin tells God. Padme about the dream he had about her dying in childbirth, and he's and the baby will change their lives. The Queen will probably not allow her to go on in the Senate because apparently children and full time jobs don't work in the Star Wars universe. Even though you have like ten droid nannies that you could easily help. Right? I mean, the kid could just be taken care of. She's him. oddly yeah. cool with all this too, especially given the fact that in the last movie they he did. had a dream and then she died. Yeah, the mom, the mom. Yeah. Like yeah. you should be like, oh fuck, I'm gonna die. Um, <laughs> that later that night, Anakin seeks the counsel of Yoda, uh, who attempts to warn him that he needs to let go of everything his, uh, he fears losing, but Anakin won't let go of this because the dream could come true. And he's like, I'm not letting go of this. And that's actually kind of a cool scene where he's like, you need to just like, you can't control everything and your your need to control everything will will eventually be your downfall. It'll eventually do the dark side, so don't do that. And Anakin's like, yeah, but like that's cool for like someone like keep my car, but this is my wife and my child's life at stake. So I think maybe I should obsess about this, right? And Yoda's like, ha <laughs> ha! I mean that that's the whole like know. had it I not know, been man. out of context cuz like Yoda's like oh d-, like I imagine Yoda sitting there being like oh shit Obi-Wan's going to die you know cuz like otherwise who means a lot to him Padme cuz everyone knows they're banging but they don't <laughs> then Yoda's terrible at yeah, his job Yeah honestly they're all real bad Yoda can feel a Jedi dying from a, from Kashyyyk and like and like he's like oh someone just died but he can't figure out when his uh, when the 22 year old horny for the other 22 year old in the next <laughs> room it's like you're fucking bad at your job dude you guys deserve to get also he should have known that you know they could tap they decapitated Dooku like I I, I feel like that should have been why a wasn't that point. a thing yeah wait you you decapitated him dude you didn't take why? a prisoner well I cut his hands off first okay so you still cut his head off yeah he was defenseless that's yeah. Very against what we are and what we do. Also, the old guy told me to do it. But also, we're getting these weird stories from Tatooine that, that a guy with a fucking lightsaber just murked all these sand people. Do you know anything about that? No. <laughs> it was like a mile from your, your your uncle's place. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's crazy. But like, and he, they, like didn't, didn't you bury your mom? Didn't he feel that? Isn't there a shot where like uh, he's killing all the sand people? We hear Qui Gon Jinn, and then it cuts to Yoda going, <sighs> yeah. Yoda just keeps feeling things, but he just like he's like, you know, it's like I got a heartburn. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a lot of when, uh, fucking, and I'll say it, man, when Gandalf dropped the ball, where he's like, you know what? I should have gone to look for that ring, but I did the worst thing possible. I just let it go, and it was sad. It was sad. And I'd rather watch that series. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. Oh, my God, I would. At least they get to eat, and it's fun, and they sing a lot. The next scene. Uh, <laughs> so much. Let's see. Uh, we get another scene where Obi-Wan tells Anakin. Oh, wait. Well, da, 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 da. What did I go here? Okay. Uh, we get another scene where Obi-Wan tells Anakin that the Senate is giving the chance for more executive power. Also, he's scared of Palpatine. The next scene, Chancellor Palpatine tells Anakin he's going to put Anakin on the Jedi Council as a representative against the better wishes of the Council. But Anakin is taken aback. The Council elects its own members. They'll never go for this. Later that day, Mace Windu tells Anakin uh, he can be on the council, but they won't give him the rank of master. And Anakin, despite knowing all of this ahead of time, loses his shit on them. To the council. It's like, be cool. The scene right before this, he was like, this is not what they normally do. I can't be on this. They have to. And he's like, don't worry, guy. He's like, I'm not comfortable with this. And the next scene, he's like, oh, I really want this. Like, and then he loses his shit. Like, but dude, what the fuck? I, I think he's losing his shit that he can't. He's not going to be called a master, and but he's going to be on the council. I get that, but and he also knows that the that, that this is the process for this. Yeah. So it's like if you go and like, it's like you want to be a general in the army. And they're like, mm, you got to sign up first and like go through basic training and like what? work. He's Double like, the what? Training. I'm what? pretty no. sure if the president comes up and just be like, he's two star general. I think he can do that. Not if you force your way onto the, into the cabinet and the president's like, I don't want you here. You know what I mean? Like, well, why would I'm they? Why would they promote you if you know they don't want you? But there? what I'm saying is, the president is like an analogous to um, Gre- uh, the chancellor, fair, right? Yeah. Fair. Um, also, I actually like this moment because, like, do, we do get to see Sidious be like, "Nah, you don't. You don't understand. They're gonna need you to spy on me, so they're gonna put you in there." It's like that's cool that he's playing that game. 
Uh, they have a quick meeting, real quick, for no reason, and they decide that Yoda will go help the Wookiees because we haven't seen them yet. And oh, remember the Wookiees? That's what from it that is. one time. We if, haven't seen them yet. Yep, we haven't seen the Wookiees. Not just the Wookiees. We are Chewbacca told himself. There is a uh, a war on Kashyyyk, which is the Wookiee home planet. And there's mm. three Ys. It's super cool. And uh, <laughs> hey, there is three Ys. You love them subtitles, don't you? I love you? it. I love and it. I, uh, and I and and that's super pertinent because Kashyyyk is a major, major, major pivotal fulcrum strong point for the entire galaxy. Or not. We don't know. We yeah. don't it know. Is, it is very weird. I why mean, the Wookiees are so important at all. I the executives that. called in and they're like, hey, we haven't seen Chewbacca and all his friends. Where are they at? But it's one of those things where it's like, again, I know we, we lament about this. But why does every? Why are there only five people in this entire galaxy who are pivotal to everything that's happening? Why does Chewbacca need to be in this at all? Like, how did he go from being a general on Kashyyyk to being in the fucking... To being like a, uh, the butt buddy for Han Solo. Is there a moment where they say he's like a prince? I don't know. I don't know. Um. Uh, anyway, let's go back to it. Sorry. <laughs> what, what were you watching? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I was watching Purple Rain. Oh, prince <laughs> Chewbacca. <laughs> Are you thinking uh, about the holiday special, maybe? Obi-Wan oh, gives Anakin man. shit for being buddies with Palpatine and then tells him that the council wants him to spy on Palpatine. Uh, he's been in power far too beyond his term limit. So they want... Uh, he's like, so you want me to go against the Jedi values and commit treason? Again, what are the the, the values here of the Jedi? Why would they do this repetitiously? Whatever the hell that is. Uh, Obi-Wan tells Mace, uh, Windu, and Yoda that Anakin is going to spy on Palpatine, but he's kind of hesitant, and everyone agrees that putting them together is a really, really bad idea, but they do it anyway because of the prophecy. And then Yoda drops a bombshell. He says, a prophecy that could have been misread. Whoa. It's a, Whoa, lot, okay. of, a what? lot of it, time being invested in this m- prophecy. And, everyone's and like, everyone seems to believe it. Yeah, everyone's like, "This. wait a minute, what are you talking about? Is this going to change the course of this entire movie? And Yoda's like, yeah, it is. And then everyone goes, okay. Fuck. Oh, cool. Yeah. We should We should worry about we should, this. We should probably <laughs> worry about it. Let's get to the sheik. Yeah, let's just go. Let's, you know what, though? The prophecy is not something you can put in a package and sell to kids. You mm-hmm. know what it is? Wookiees. They're That's furry. That's why it's more fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They based a lot of decisions off this prophecy. This seems like it could have been a bigger bombshell than it should have been. Anyway, uh, then Padme and Anakin hang out again, and Anakin questions the Jedi Order's direction, and Padme questions whether or not the Senate has turned bad, and we're once again 45 minutes into this movie with only one action scene has happened, and that scene was boring. Padme asks Anakin to use his relationship with Palpatine to open negotiations with the Separatists instead of keeping the fighting going, and Anakin doesn't want any part of it. Then Padme uh, just wants to be held. Instead of any sort of conflict resolution here she's just like i'm scared i just want to be held i I'm also a dumb broad i'm a dumb broad who's got pregnancy brain and i can't work anymore i also think this is a cool moment <laughs> it's in like the what the fuck it, it, anakin's like man everyone is just trying to use me like uh sidious wants to use me to find out what's going on with the jedi council jedi council's trying to figure out what's happening to Sidious. now i'm coming home and my wife is trying to use me to manipulate the Je- uh, sidious again it's one of those things where like Ugh. this we, we talked before but it's like there's a lot of complex stuff being explored here but it's just being explored, not explored in the well. absolute wrong not way not in an intelligent way and in the way they're exploring it and this is the this is why this movie really just fundamentally breaks down for me is that there's like 10 scenes back to back where it's just two people telling the audience what's happening with the plot and it's so convolutedly complex and also so boring that you just fuck your mind just goes blank yeah. there is literally back to back to back sequences where Anakin just says I'm really not happy with what's going on with the Jedi and everyone's like we fucking get it bro but you ever have that friend that just complains about their girlfriend over and over again and you're like then break up with her like just fuck it. And no one's like, just go. You don't have to be a fucking <laughs> Jedi. They, what do they have? Are you like under contract with these guys? Is there an NDA we don't know about here? It's like that fucking Death Stranding NDA. Anyway, all right. Um, Embargo. Whatever. Anakin <laughs> meets up with Palpatine who tells him they've discovered the location of Grievous. Uh, then they talk about the Jedi Council wanting to betray Palpatine and take control of the Republic. Uh, Anakin admits to spy, be, like at being asked to spy on Palpatine. He's like, I don't know what you want me to say here, buddy. And Palpatine's like... Maybe I chose wrong here. Like, if you're going to just go, if you're going to give up your people that easily, maybe you're not the best. That was pretty quick, yeah. Yeah, no, but I, I feel like like that was the reason. Also, what was that, that show they were him? watching? It looked cool. It did look cool. Oh, the, like, play flo- thing? The floating water mm-hmm. shit? It looked like Blitzball. I think it was Cirque du Soleil Blitzball, water. Yeah. <laughs> Blitzball huh? opera. Cirque du Soleil water. Yeah. Uh, they talk about the differences between the Sith and the Jedi, and it turns out there's actually not really that many of them. Uh, yeah, both sides are pretty super things. selfish and really scared of losing power. Uh, then Palpatine tells Al- uh, Anakin about uh, Darth Plagueis, the, the wise, wise, who could save 
people from death. He became so powerful that the only thing he was afraid of was losing his power, uh, which he did. How? I don't know. He just says he wish he did. You get killed in his sleep? Yeah. Uh, but it, okay. I guess by that makes his, sense. By, <laughs> by his um, okay. by, so apprentice. He was, apprentice so he was killed in his sleep by his apprentice. Are we, do we just assume that's Sidious, right? Yeah. yeah. I assume so. Yeah. And instead of asking any questions, Anakin just wants in. Man, that sounds great. Sign me. Stop up. death. This all sounds like upside. That's to the me. one thing I've been trying to do. Right. Uh, so this is a, a weird thing for me where I actually love this scene just because it's cool and I yeah. feel like it does deep in the lore and like mm. it gives some context to the It reminds me a lot all. of like Deathly Hollows when the sto- when those stories are being told. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this is really fucking cool. I wish it was built up a bit more. Uh, the, the problem that I have with it though is that it makes absolutely no sense when we look at the, the entire rise of power that Palpatine has. Like that's the point of these prequels. In the, the the broad sense, not just in the Anakin turns bad, right? It's like Palpatine's rise to power. I feel like we give him way too much credit for being a master puppeteer when it's like, damn, this whole death thing seems weirdly convenient. That literally the, the one thing that could turn Anakin bad is the one power that you have that the Sith have over the Jedi. But that's well, the thing, unless you think that it, all of it has been orchestrated. Unless, but we have no reason to believe that's the case. Deleted scene. Deleted scene makes it clear that, like, um, the, the one you were talking about where it it's kills, Count... That, that kills Count Maul? Duke. Yeah. That's just make him angry. Well, but also, the, the whole, like, thing about, like, you can't make her get pregnant. You get no, what I'm No, but I think, that, I think that this was... To me, I read this because later... He goes, uh, he asks him again, and he goes, I actually don't know how to do it, but together we'll, we'll figure, figure it out. It out. Yeah. And I don't think he knows how to do it. Palpatine no. walked in and, like, cut holes in the condoms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, no, I but, get, like, I he the... set up the relationship, right? Like, he pushed for her to he have a guard. He knew they were going to bang it out. He pushed for her to have a guard, and it happened to be, uh, what's his face? Because the other guy was going for a more important thing. Do they only have two Jedis to do it? I don't know. But, like, he... Oh, he actually even pushed for it to be Anakin in the second movie. He was like, uh, I'm going to recommend Anakin because you guys have a relationship. You guys know each other. Right? So, like, I I think he has been orchestrating all these things. That's totally cool. Orchestrating, hey, I'm going to put these two people together. They're going to fuck. They're going to have a baby. She's going to die in childbirth. Is a, Like, that is it's, a plan that you cannot but, solve. But here's the thing. What if he was pushing? Forget everything you know. You're yeah, right. I mean, that, that, right. that, that that's where we get to. And it's like, he very well could be, like, it... Maybe it isn't that he was having visions as much as, like, later we see characters push visions on people, right? Yeah. I, I feel like a lot of these similar things sort of happen throughout a lot of movies, even the rest of the Star Wars universe, but they're more acceptable because the well, I mean, look, there's gonna, a little bit there's, better. There's going to be know? leaps in logic here and there, but the, ultimately yeah. what, what what's sad is that his plan... I think they wanted his plan to come off as like this mastermind plan, and you're just kind of convoluted as to what he did versus what he was opportunistically like taking Absolutely. advantage of. And to me, this read as a, oh, I see these two th- people that if I push a little bit, I can control via his love for her mm-hmm. and by the fact that I know they're together and it's taboo and it's illegal and he's worried about that. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you can't make a plan as complex as it is as his was. I mean, this might have been like his third attempt to, to get things going the way he wanted, you know? Where it's like, it is him playing with the pieces that are him falling. But it took 13 years to do. Oh, I'm, I'm from sure. The, from the Battle of the, Naboo to this moment, it's been 13 years. But yes. I'm sure he killed Plagueis as a young man. So I'm sure he's been doing this for 60 years, trying to set this all up. Yeah. yeah. And Either way, happens. over on what's up? Really quick, just uh, just a highlight of the scene, right? I just I really love the delivery. Not from a Jedi. Uh, not from a Jedi. Who says it? Stop it. Yeah, Stop yeah where he's like, he's like, can I learn, can these I learn things? this power? Oh, like, got it, got it, got it. Not, not from a Jedi. I legitimately love that. Yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah, that like I, this is the best acting in the whole movie is Ian McDermott. Is yeah. that his name? But it's just, it's very like, I don't know. We've lamented on it enough. Over on Kashyyyk, Yoda hangs out with the Wookiees and has another meeting with the council uh, via uh, Skype. He Skypes into the council. And they found General Grievous. And Anakin wants to be the one to go, uh, but the council votes that Obi-Wan should go. And then Anakin's like, I should be the one to go kill him. And Obi-Wan and we're like, Nobody cares? cares about my vote. Yeah. Uh, we right. see Wookiees fight droids, and who cares? Because we have zero fucking connection to anything that's happening here. Those poor so. Wookiees are getting killed. Whatever. 
Uh, good. I mean, serves them right. Except, oh, remember, <laughs> two of them kind of, two of them swinging like Tarzan, because we've seen that before. And then they do so the So we remember that, and they yeah. do the Tarzan yell. Remember? And the subtitle does say Tarzan yell. Yeah. Do you guys, <laughs> no, I'm serious. It does. Yeah. It does. It's really? the same thing yeah. for Return of the Jedi. Whoa. You guys remember when that happened in Return of the Jedi? Because mm-hmm. that's watch, what they want you to remember. Uh, and, you know, uh, then Obi-Wan and Anakin share a scene where Anakin apologizes for being frustrated with the council. He's like, man, I'm just so sorry. I've been so frustrated with all this. And Obi-Wan goes, you know what? You're really wise. Is what he says to him. <laughs> he goes, "It's okay. You're for apologizing. You're very wise." I kind of, li- I kind of like that moment. What the fuck did he do? What has he done at all that's, that's wise? wise? None of this makes any he sense. Doesn't only, he doesn't only say wise. He he says like, you know, you're you're you've <laughs> learned a lot. You've grown a lot. And I he and I love it, though. He's having an illicit yeah. affair with a girl who he knocked up. It's like not he good. He decapitated the dude. But and he also murderer. talked about like the nine times that Obi Wan was saved by Anakin. Time. It's true. No, we've seen one of those. So. Uh, also, like, we, like Obi Wan's killed a bunch of people, right? Never murdered though. I'm he pretty sure Obi Wan. Or uh, uh, again, people. It's, it's a defenseless thing. thing. It's here's not the, a murder thing. You guys are equating murder with like this guy just nearly killed my best friend is trying to kill me. And like now we gotta get the fuck out of here, and I gotta carry this guy and this dude with two arms. I can't do it, but but I can't let him live because obviously robot hands very easy to do. Yeah, they're really you easy know? to do. Also, just to point out, this is the last scene that they're together and they're friends. Yeah, and there is mm-hmm. no emotional weight to that. Not there at is all. no like goodbye. Like I don't know the next time I'm gonna see you because the next time they see each other, they're trying yeah, to kill each other. Brother to yep. me. So uh, then Obi-Wan heads off to find Grievous. That night Anakin dreams about Padme dying again or maybe uh, she's banging Obi-Wan. I don't know. There's a little bit of that in there a little bit, right? Am I the only one that felt that? Anyway, it could go either way. <laughs> Padme and Anakin talk about uh, talking again, and Anakin feels lost, which is kind of uh, something we already know from the last ten scenes where he said <laughs> he feels as much. Uh, he found a way to save Padme from his nightmares, and Padme's like, "I'm not gonna fucking die during childbirth. I promise." Unless and he goes, you "No, me. I promise." And she goes, "I promise." He goes, "No, I promise you won't." And she goes, "I." Cool. What the fuck happened? Bro. It doesn't matter. Why do I what like you? What the fuck is happening? Obi Wan lands on Utapau. Is that how you say that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, to search for Grievous, and the people that greet him there just kind of tell him that Grievous. They're like, "Hey, man, he's here." I really like this scene. I know it's fucking dumb. It's so but dumb. Getting over there and then like the 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 walking, and it's so dumb. But them walking and be like, "Did you tell him? Yeah. Is he coming back more? I don't know. It's just such a silly, it, th- stupid This thing. scene really confused me. Um, it's confusing because he he walks up and they're like oh he's on the he's on the tenth floor or whatever go get him, and then he's like all right cool 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 and then he flies away, and then they no he makes his ship fly away yeah he tells the R unit yeah. he goes go fly back to the thing and tell Cody General Cody to, to bring okay the so the thing that was confusing me though is that it looked then it cuts to like a hooded Obi Wan underneath yeah. shading mm-hmm. and it looks like it's happening all simultaneously yeah. I, I, is it not. Yeah, I because think I think he's projecting himself like Luke does at the end of The Last Jedi, where he's like protect, projecting his image into. No, I don't think he's doing uh, that. I think he just. I no think it was way. just a bad cut. No. I think he was supposed to. The way the way the, way the scene was supposed him. to happen is he tells his R2 unit, and he was trying to make it look like he was in the ship. And then we cut, and he's hiding because we see Grievous looking down, like, "Oh, I guess he took off. I don't have to worry about this anymore." Yeah, because so, like, it, it just looks like it. Look, uh, uh, what I first did, I sw- I straight up Googled like. Obi Wan is he a clone? <laughs> Does he have a clone that like the clone flies back and then the hooded one is like, oh, there he is leaving. I'm watching him in real time. Like it all happened so weirdly. I don't know. I was very no, confused. I, I, at least he had a lizard, you know. Mm. Oh, he doesn't have it yet, but he does. He's gonna have that big Whoa. ass. God damn it, Andy. That's really good. <laughs> You're really Thanks, good. Man. Really good. Uh, we see a scene where Grievous uh, is meeting with the separatists and he orders them to Mustafar so they'll be safe there. And they're like, why are we even a part of this anymore? I would be like, can we just go? Like, I'm nuts, gun rays, and I just don't want to be a part of this anymore. <laughs> uh, instead of waiting for the fleet, though, Anakin's like, you know what? I'm going to take some of uh, Anakin's advice and just take care of this myself. So he jumps down uh, into the middle of an entire droid army. Mm. Uh, but instead mm. of letting them just fucking kill him, Grievous goes, no. I'll take care of this guy myself. This advanced, the scariest warrior on the fuck in the entire galaxy. I got this because I got emphysema, but it's not. It's it's cool. I took my. It's pills. not that bad. Yeah, I yeah. took my pills. Uh, and then he pulls he out. He was trained in the Jedi arts. He tells him, "I was trained in the Jedi arts by Count Dooku for at least a week, so I got this." And I also have four arms and four lightsabers from Jedi that I killed. Why does he have four arms? Like, I no, guess. you weren't. Okay, I watched the video. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I swear I did. I mean, the also, homework. it doesn't matter. I'm just going to buzzsaw 
until for a second until yeah, they get until cut it, off. It, but it just what like actually watching the choreogra- like the chor- choreography, choreography here is so like oh he could have slashed him with his other arm that's just sitting there here yeah. or mm-hmm. here or here. There's so <laughs> many moments where so many arms had he just used the other arms to slice. I liked him having the blue and green lightsabers, though. Like, that makes him seem like a badass, even though he's fucking coughing. Yeah. Uh, so they start, uh, he cuts one of the arms off and gets the better of Grievous, despite Grievous having four times the advantages to kill him. Uh, and then, but before they can finish, uh, the clones get there and they, out of nowhere, again, just appear and they start fighting uh, all the droids. And then Grievous takes off in a giant spinning wheel and Obi Wan pursues him on his iguana. Uh, Man, shout out to that spinning wheel. Yeah. Did it need to have legs? No. No. Oh. But do I love the legs? I sure do. I mean, it was cool enough that they put it in Borderlands 3, so I'm just saying. It's, ah, it's a cool fucking bike. Fair point. Uh, also, the bikes that will have, like, one giant wheel around you, it's cool, man. Technology's getting there. As he's uh, pursuing Grievous, of course, he has to drop his lightsaber because otherwise we can't believe that Grievous would have any fucking chance no in chance hell of beating him because we've already seen Grievous with four lightsabers get easily, easily taken by Obi-Wan. So uh, and so he drops his lightsaber in the middle of a bunch of clones and a really bad CG clone picks it up and goes, oh, where was this? And then the scene cuts There were out. a lot of moments during this whole fight where I'm just like, just fucking force him, dude. Like, it, again, forget everything you know. And he ends up doing that later he does. on. Well, no, he does that but here. But, like, right off, when he's doing the spinning, just be like, fuck Well, he me. does. That's how he beats him, right? So he cuts one of his arms off, and he forces him, and Grievous goes, shit, I, I can't take take this. And he gets up and gets off on the thing. But then do, don't forget about that for the next scene where he doesn't use that power. That really worked really, really well. <laughs> also, Instead, he decides to hand-to-hand fight Grievous. A seven foot four fucking, fucking monster foot. Kicks covered he in armor. Him and he's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. That's right, you're metal. <laughs> Uh, Most, mostly. Back on Coruscant, Mace Windu senses a plot to destroy the Jedi. <laughs> what? All right. So once the war is over, we should take back control from the Chancellor by force if he won't give it up willingly. And Yoda's like, man, this could be dicey. This shit could go south fast. And everyone's like, yeah, we fucked this up royally. Is this... Is this as they're getting on to... No, that's a little later. Uh, Anakin meets with Palpatine, and again, uh, 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 to once again, Venice frustrations with the council. And at this point, I'd be like, dude, I get it. You don't like what's going on here. This is the 15th scene now where you've talked about how you don't like what's happening with the Jedi. We get it. You're, you're disgruntled. Uh, Palpatine admits to Anakin that he knows the ways of the dark side. He encourages Anakin to embrace a larger view of the Force if he wants to be a leader. If he learns the dark side of the Force, he can save his wife from death. And, oh, by the way, I'm the Sith Lord. And Anakin wants to kill him. He's like, you're the Sith Lord that's caused all this problem? You're Sidious? Uh, uh, hmm. And then Anakin gets control of himself and decides to turn Palpatine in. But Palpatine's not worried, and neither are we. Um, this, uh, <laughs> th- this whole this whole thing, man. Wow. Wee, wee, wee. I keep this going because I gotta pee. I, I gotta pee next to. <laughs> oh no! I'm in the other room. <laughs> Don't sit down. And I'm Don't a, sit I'm down. I'm heartbroken. All right. Yeah. Uh, four and five. That's where you put my movies with the little Annie. Yeah. Four and five. They're yeah. gonna, they're gonna go I don't lower. know what you people want. I assume it's this. Come out here, Grief. <laughs> this is what you people want. <laughs> this is what makes a good movie. Wait, hold on. We have to hear the we have to hear her, his voice. It's here. not fantastic. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> not keep keep talking. What the fuck do you want from me? <laughs> He said the F word. (laughs) Holy (laughs) shit. Is this the Chinese version? (laughs) What what is going on? What is going on? These Uh, these are personations. Impersonations. What? (laughs) God damn it. It looks, isn't it? I agree. I agree. There's no one bigger than a corn star. Rasp your voice. Rasp your voice. Okay, let me just scream. Do it. Do it. Do it. What the fuck do you want from me? <laughs> He's so angry. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, we got the cop. We got the cop. We're out there. He's coughing. We're aliens to the galaxy far, far away. You're not happy with anything. Yeah, it's four and five, guys. Sorry. Like, this one might be pretty low. Where are your eyes? <laughs> right <laughs> He's looking at me. <sighs> Watto and Grievous, thank you. After my first girlfriend died, I took over ten wives. 
so I've gotten the most pussy out of almost everyone in Star Wars and definitely everyone at this table. Wow. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Is that oh Kevin? man, grievous! <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. I'm more pussy sure. than anyone. Wow. Do you want to keep reading Nick's plot? No, definitely yeah. not. Yeah, man. Where are we at? Uh, it's time for some ads. You know that it it might be. That's you a know? perfect time. It might be. Let's. It look, might be. Let's keep talking. Let's just just a little bit longer. A little you bit longer. I mean? right, hey Tim, yeah. look over here. Yeah. How you doing? Right, How you do doing, Bat? Andy, do you want to? No, I can there tell you are. right now that this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Uh, Manscaped is. Uh, who's the best? Wait, well, ah, hold on. Who's the best in men's below the belt grooming? Manscaped. They offer precision engineered tools for your family jewels. We've all been there, Andy. You yeah. know what I mean? Trying to shave, trying We've to make sure things, hair. things are looking pretty. Greg once had chest hair. Now he just has a bat signal. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their perfect package 2.0. Man, they sent us one of these. I gave it to Nick because he wanted it, which makes a lot of sense. Harry, man. Nick's desk is in front of mine. And there's monitors in the way, so I don't see him. This morning, I just saw his head raise up, and I just heard it turn on. Oh, and I'm no. just like, great, Nick. Great. Good for him. Uh, of course, let's not forget about the crop preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? It exactly. makes a lot of sense. And why would you use the same razor on your balls as you're using on your face? You should have no a sense. separate one, man. That's just nasty. It's time to get clean with the Perfect Package 2.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MORNING at manscaped.com. Always use the right tools for the job. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MORNING at manscaped.com. Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code MORNING. I'm sure Grievous uh, used Manscaped mm -hmm. at some point. He was smooth. <laughs> Grievous rubbed a lot of Manscaped on his open heart and his organs and shit. Yeah. And once what, they get smelly now. Here's there. the thing, though. You still got to cover it up, though. Once it's not smelling, you, you still got to like have something in between yeah. the balls and the pants. Well, the MeUndies yeah. are the things oh. for you. Oh, we have a promo code. I was looking for, for one last night. Oh, we do have a promo code. Yeah, MeUndies.com slash morning, Andy, to get 15% Whoa! off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can go to MeUndies.com slash morning. That's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash morning. I'm wearing them right now. I'm loving them right now. Nick, I just gave you your first pair of MeUndies. Have they're you tried them soft. yet? They're very soft. I have tried them. I like them yeah. a lot. Yeah, they're very, very soft. And uh, I got the fun, I think it was like uh, Dio de los Muertos. Yeah, yeah the cut, Day of the Dead ones. They're really, really cool. I like them. Mm -hmm. Paul really yeah. likes those, yeah. too. It's it's fun. Yeah. Obviously, they there's a, have a ton of different fun designs. They, they like to stay themed and stuff, so whatever fun things are going on. It's kind of like KFAF. You know what I mean? It's like if there's a no, celebration of a day going on, you're going to get an undie exactly. print for that as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, but you got to love them. They're super soft. They're super fun. I wear them every day. Barrett, are you wearing them? One day, we got to change your life, just like we did with so Kevin. So good. I got the you know? unicorn tons right now. I mean, now. Barrett, use a promo code. I'm buying, I'm legitimately buying them right now because I was looking last night. Yeah. And I tweeted out, what's our promo code? There you go. <laughs> Here we go. Meundies.com <laughs> slash morning. You can get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Once again, meundies.com slash morning. And finally, shout out to Upstart. As most of us have found out the hard way, getting into debt is easy. Getting out is hard, especially if your credit score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score and offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Uh, Greg Miller, back in the day, uh, back when he was a small, small boy, um, he he could have used some help from this here upstart with the, with his credit, some decisions that he's made. Nick, what was that? I was just like, how much? I'm like, I just thought of Greg as a pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. I wonder why. That's a big pumpkin. Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you. Uh, they make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes. And the best part is, once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. Uh, you can see why Upstart's ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. And hurry to upstart.com slash morning to find out how low your upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit. That's U-P-S-T-A-R-T dot com slash morning. Back to you, Nick. Back on Utapau, Obi-Wan catches up to Grievous, but since he doesn't have his lightsaber anymore, they have to hand-to-hand -to -hand close combat fight. Makes sense, right? Because evidently you can only muster one force push a day. And that's it. Then you, you have to wait for your power level meter Always to recharge. Yeah. Right and so what does he do? Battles. He resorts to the most garish of weapons, the blaster. 
and he blasts Grievous into just, and then he goes, "How uncivilized!" Because you remember that time we we learned that it was from uh, it's a, a elegant weapon for a more civilized time. Well, this is that civilized time, and a blaster is Garody, yeah. but also saved his life. Yeah, so. but also he could have just pushed his. Head. I like that his eyes explode in fire. <laughs> It's really violent. But like, why was that designed that way? Well, who we cares? Man, Anakin and Mace Windu take a casual stroll to go relieve Palpatine of, of his emergency power, and Anakin tells Palpatine that uh, Anakin tells uh, Mace, Mace Windu that Palpatine is Lord Sidious. Then Mace says, "Our worst fears have been realized. We have to move quickly if the Jedi Order is to survive." Then they just keep. Casually walking forward, but also why? Why do they have to move quickly? Oh. Or do we call everyone back and we all take them down together? Before Watto and Grievous uh, grace us with their presence, I was so it, that this the the back and forth between Palpatine and Anakin of like, oh, you're the Sith Lord, you know, I, yeah. I'm going to go tell everybody, and then like he just he let him go. Yeah, he was like, yeah, yeah do it. Yeah, Bring it. Like, it, like you that, would think you'd be like, "What? Well, you have to come with me because I have to put you in chains because yeah. you have just admitted to me mm -hmm. that you are the one responsible for yeah. killing lots of people and all the wars and all the uh, you you are the mastermind, the architect of the Jedi's destruction and all of my friends that you've killed. You're coming with me. I'm putting you in chains. You're going to go into a cell, but so we figure this out, or." I trust that you're just not going to go anywhere, right? You're not going to run. Where's he going to go? He's the, he's the most powerful dude in the, in the like galactic senate. I mean, right I now. definitely wouldn't give him more like time he, to like. He's not going to run prepare. away. Yeah, to prepare. Yeah, to prepare for this. Hey, when you leave, just make sure. Yeah, make sure the door locks behind you. But okay, apparently, you know, they're like, very, very trusting in the so Jedi bad. Council. Because but what, what does happens he do? Next? He just chills. Well, this is what he does. He tells Mace Windu. And Mace is like, "Cool, I'll go take care of this." But Anakin, I can sense you're a little conflicted about this. And I can't really trust you. If what you said is true, then I will trust you. But until I trust you, you have to go get put into a cell too. And by the cell, I mean just go chill up at the third floor hotel lounge that is the Jedi Council room. Just go up there. Yeah. You know where the best Western is? Go to the third floor. That's where the Jedi Council room is. You go there. Mm -hmm. I until that, I do this. Okay? I thought that line was really cool where he was like, if this information is true, then you have gained my trust. It was like, oh yeah, Mace Windu never liked you. We could see that. But there's a there's there's a line. But the where... acting was so bad. Where it was like, how is it that Samuel Jackson is fucking boring right now? Well, and he gets on a little plane and they're like, I'll see you later. But there's a moment in in movies where you see leadership, right? And this this is like in the the best movie ever made, Die Hard, where the FBI gets there. And they're even stupider than the chief of police who was running this thing. And it's done for a reason because Sergeant Al Powell is the only person that really knows what's going on, right? And you go, when those FBI agents die, you go, good, because you were fucking stupid. And you deserve to die in a helicopter crash because you were arrogant and you weren't listening to the people that really knew what was happening. We're borderline that with Mace Windu and Yoda in this. Why the fuck would you let him? You know he's a double agent. You just admitted that he is conflict. You can sense that he's conflicted about betraying this guy. Why would you not have other people guard him? It's cool, man. Just go up to the conference room, get yourself a cup of coffee, wait for us. But I don't or think, come back and kill me. Whatever. I, I don't think it matters in the sense that, like, I don't think that Max Wonder could have beaten him. I think that the the reason why Lord uh, Sidious is in the position that he is is because he knew that um, Anakin was coming, and he needed Anakin to make that as his big jump. That was his big moment of like turning against the Jedi Council. Right, but Mace didn't know any of this shit. No, so but if, like, if you came to me and said, hey, Andy's got a fucking gun in the next room and I might help him, I'd be like, okay, well, I have to have Kevin come su subdue you so I can go deal with that. Yeah, Not Kevin. just hang out in the other room with a gun and, and come maybe, maybe come shoot me. Yeah. You know? All I'm saying is these people are fucking morons and no, should they, not they run anything. They had to somehow get his face fucked up. Oh, we're getting to that. Anyway, uh, then Mace still, uh, okay, cool. Uh, so Anakin goes and just sits in the Jedi Council until he remembers Palpatine's words, which says that if he dies, any chance of Anakin saving Padme dies with him. So while he watches the sunset, he decides to be become bad. And then Mace Windu goes to arrest Sidious, but Sidious has one more trick up his sleeve. Literally, it's a lightsaber. Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. He makes quick. He makes real quick work Fuck, of the two man. dumb shit Jedi's that Mace Windu brought Fisto, with him. Fisto, like ah, he's so cool looking, and he gets sliced down in thir like three seconds. Yeah, 
And then Windu gets the but, but Mace Windu is the better swordsman than Palpatine, uh, and he gets the better of him. Uh, kind of. It gets knocks the saber out of his hand, but before he can arrest them, Anakin walks in, and Sidious starts throwing lightning, and then they both accuse each other of being traitors, and then Sidious's face gets all old looking because remember when it was old looking in the other movies? That's why. God, it's so fucking weird. Later in the movie, when he has the hood on, it looks good. I would say looks fine. I don't really like the eyes; yeah. it's <clears throat> distracting. But uh, when he doesn't have the hood on, the whole morphing and all that. Uh, I, I get that too. when you turn yourself to the dark side, like it, it can start to corrupt your facial features and like make your you eyes. look uh, eyes and evil. It's like when you like go that. renegade in Mass Effect, you're yeah. like you get like red little scars on your but body. I thing. just always assumed that the makeup for the Emperor in the original trilogy was to make him look a little older oh, and a little yeah. bit more ominous. I didn't think it was supposed to make Scar. him look like a monster or scarred yeah. or something like that. So the fact that they did that in this was just like, why? Yeah. Those two Jedi, those two Jedi, element. by the way, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like just like, just uh, like oh, like they're they're what? How are you in this position? Yeah, uh, like but, the little kid in the fucking later on that defends uh, goddamn yeah. Jimmy Smith, like did a much better job against all these droids than this one guy did against the slowest attack ever. God, like, terrible. But also the effects of him like flipping, which he didn't have to do. Yeah, there's no reason to do a backflip right now. But he did, and it just was like, man, this looks like... No, no, no! <laughs> like, it's just so terrible. And also, <laughs> unlimited power. It was like, all right. I, all right, man. What the fuck uh, is that? Do you have unlimited we power? Need num- and we need then, numbers on everything. And then, yeah, and then Goku came in, Kamehameha. Like, they are yeah. just calling out their moves and shit. Ultra unlimited yeah. power. <laughs> Uh, seeing his only chance to save Padme, Anakin stops Windu from killing Sidious, and then Sidious electrocutes him to death out the window. Then Anakin's like, what have I done? Also, what the fuck happened to your face? <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ, cover that I, shit up. I, I, he did that to himself. He started shocking, immediately Mace Could've Windu was like, oh, block. Yeah. And, and then that could have been it. going. But yeah. like he kept on, and I get it felt good. that that was to win over, like Shock Mike. Like sometimes when we touch yeah. the trust, yeah. and we secretly like it. Yeah, uh, and I get that he did that so that he could win over Anakin. But like, man, that dude fucked up his face. Then Anakin j- pledges his unholy allegiance to Sidious, uh, his teachings, and and then he's given the new name Darth Vader. There it is. That's how he got not his name. Darth Anakin, Darth Vader, because you got to get a whole new name, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Darth Skywalker, not cool. Darth Vader, cool. Where'd you get Vader from? Just thought of it. That's how cool I am. It's like a like a fighting chicken. That's what his thing is for. Uh, Sidious is names uh, names all the Jedi enemies of the Republic, or excuse me, <laughs> names all the Jedi yeah. enemies of the Republic. Uh, they have to all be destroyed, including Obi Wan and the kids. He orders Anakin to the temple to clean house, and then to Mustafar to kill Nuts Gunray. Uh, Sidious calls uh, Commander Cody. And then orders him to execute. Weird name, Commander Cody. Hey, Commander <laughs> yeah, Cody. Is, uh, very, it feels is very much, Disney Channel. Yeah. Like. Is he a much bigger character in uh, Clone Wars? He is a character. Like I think he's he's got a, like a couple of like episodes where he's like one of the main casts. But mm-hmm. Mikey, call Cody and bring him inside. We're gonna we have lunch dinners ready. Like I like the such a weird I like name. the idea that they, all the clones are sitting there in like the little like lunch room with fucking a hundred thousand clones. And like one of them was just like, call me Cody from now on. <laughs> and then everyone's like, no, dude, your designation is E fucking 039. That's the cool thing. I, again, I know this is like the just in the context of the movies and whatnot, but the I like that in the the show they do give the context of they don't want to feel like just right. numbers and soldiers. They have and nicknames stuff. Like, they, and stuff. And they have personalities. What, and they, what like, an they original become... concept. Such an original concept, Lucas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we call Cody. Call Cody. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I feel like that is like, and, and granted, I'm not a big fan of Clone Wars, but like the idea that it is seeing all these clones and like, like that that is that is I think an original concept of like this mass clone army and how these people all define themselves. You know? Nah, I just feel I like I, I don't know. I don't feel like that's. I feel like there's a bunch of movies where there's a lot of robots. Like, no, I'm my own person. Like, mm-hmm. call me so and so. Remember Terminator Three? Yeah. Do you think Commander Cody went on to <laughs> own a drapery business <laughs> and not bang his wife? Uh, he tells him to execute Order 66. God. So they blast Obi-Wan off of his iguana. Uh, and then on every battlefield across the galaxy, we see clones turn on the Jedi and fucking ice them. And then over a cool on. cool moment. It's a cool moment. Yeah. Very, very, very cool moment. Could it have been better? A thousand hundred percent. But, but like, it was cool to see the dude with the fucked up head just like, what the fuck? Oh, no. And then shot dead. And yeah, then another moment where this is what's just over. What's up? I said his name. 
What's what, it? what is his name? Kiati Mundi. Yeah. Well, I never knew that. Kiati Mundi, yeah. back to you, buddy. Uh, over on Kashyyyk, this is too much for Yoda's little heart to handle. And he oh. goes, oh, my heart. It means no worries. My heart. <laughs> and then we see some other people get ice. And then it's Yoda's turn. But Yoda ain't Flu-coon, no fool. man. No, goes down like a bitch in, a, in the plane. Yeah. Jeez. That was sad. Uh, Yoda just cuts the shit off of these guys' fucking the heads that try to kill him. him. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and then, uh... But you don't think, like, the Wookiee's like, what the fuck, dude? Whoa! Yeah. Hey, I, uh, whoa. Just <laughs> the Wookiee is like, you guys came and saved us. You want to kill as many goddamn soldiers as you want? <laughs> I get it. You, you don't think the Wookiees are out there clones. torturing clones, too, for sport? <laughs> They're like, fuck <laughs> these guys. They all look the same. No one cares. Ripping the heads Who off. Who cares? Uh, just ripping arms off and beating them with it. Uh, then we see a bunch of young Padawans... Uh, hiding in the council room, and uh, oh, and then Anakin comes in, and one of them goes, "Hey, Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. That kid what are we going to adorable. do?" You don't think that kid was fucking adorable? Yeah, he was super British. Though. And when they turned on the lightsaber, and he fucking, His little it was back. like, "Oh That's my so god, terrifying!" Dude, I think that that scene is legitimately fucking great, yeah. and it is iconic, and they did it. Yeah, like that. But that's the thing where I'm like, it is a big jump for Anakin to have done this, but like. I, but like, I, this I appreciate it. it. That's a bad guy. I know. If, Never going back. If only it were earned. Yep. Yeah. If only we That's were. If only movie, it, I mean, this was supposed to be a punch to the gut. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, this is the point of the movie where, like, where you pause it and go, fuck, I have like 30 more minutes of this abomination left. Let's just get through it. No. It was like an hour in. This is an oh, that's hour right, and we still have all the minutes. Stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like this and is definitely. Yoda I, fighting I, the at guy's this point, I did not pause it. Like, at this point, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, things are actually, like, now we've got something going on. From here on out, I've never experienced a movie feel as fast and slow at the same time. Mm. It's like time is standing still, but also punishing you. Uh, Jimmy Smith's is saved by a really cool young Padawan, and I wish I knew more about him, but he just gets fucking murked. Mm. Uh, and then Obi-Wan emerges from the Blue Lagoon, not dead after all. Over on Kashyyyk, Yoda says goodbye to Chewbacca, because we've seen him before, too. Remember him? So remember him? He's in the other He's movies. in this. He's in the other movies. Uh, and then he gets in his little cute little egg ship, and he goes back to Planet Yoda with all the rest of the Yodas. <laughs> we don't know where he's going. He just gets in his little egg ship. You're like, where'd you get that little egg ship, I think they, they go to... Extra. No, he goes and meets through. up with Jimmy Schmitz. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Schmitz walks down a hallway. And this is something I want to note. Okay? So we get the next scene, which is Jimmy Schmitz walking down the iconic white hallway to this cruiser that we've seen uh, in A New Hope. Yeah. And it's a practical set. And it actually hit me. How fucking cool that was. And how out of place in this movie. And how it unbelievably is. sadly out of place it is. It is the first shot in this entire movie, probably in the entire trilogy, that reminds me of a Star Wars movie. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I wish the other 90% of this movie had been practical, but it wasn't. But then we see it again later. I'm like, that's so fuck. You yeah. see a Jedi walking, it's so fucking cool. A bunch uh, of anyway. fake felt and fake metals everywhere and fake carpet, and it's weird. Let me see. It's all CG bullshit. Yeah. Anyway, uh, walks in the hallway of the puppy ship. Uh, Obi Wan escapes uh, up to Quad Bank, whatever, in a Cadillac, and, ca- and he call and he uses the emergency code to contact Jimmy Smith, who sends him the rendezvous coordinates. Uh, back on Coruscant, Anakin tells Padme that the Jedi have tried to overthrow the Republic, but he's loyal to the Chancellor now and the Senate, and and, and to Padme. And Padme is scared. And boy, do they give her just fucking nothing to do in this movie. Obi Wan meets up with uh, Bail or, or Jimmy Smith again and Yoda, uh, and the, apparently there's a coded message from the temple. That's being sent out uh, to bring all the Jedi there. Full retreat. And they're like, oh, no, this is a trap for them. This is a pivotal moment. If we don't go decode this message and turn it off, the remainder of the Jedi, who are all already dead anyway, will be drawn back to this planet. So we have to do this. This is going to be a huge scene where we have to break into this thing. No, it's not. Uh, It does give us the cool moment of fucking Yoda outside just cutting down Fucking stormtroopers. Yeah. yeah. Clones, uh, clones, Anakin yeah. lands on the lava planet of Mustafar, which is orbiting a very lovely looking planet that's much bigger and probably way easier to hide on. But you know what? Let's put everyone on the real hot planet. Uh, Anakin walks in. And, what's up? I was, there's some significance in Mustafar that they've added later where it's like a hotbed for like Sith shit. Yeah, I remember. I watched uh, Rogue One also. Uh, Anakin walks in. I don't and think that they mentioned it in Rogue One. He's on the planet in Rogue One. They literally see Vader yeah. on Mustafar. No, I know. It doesn't matter. That's It's Force Awakens. No, they don't mention what you yeah, just said, yeah. but we get, it's Mustafar. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why we see it again in Rogue One. Because guess what? We've seen it before. Star Wars. Uh, Anakin walks in and just murks all the Separatists. And this is a scene that should really be scary, but it's not. 
And I draw you back to Rogue One, which is a future spoiler, but the end of that fucking movie is terrifying, and that's what this whole so sequence should have been. Yeah. But since you it's don't badly care, shot. and you don't really give a fuck about Anakin... It's really one of those things you're really like, Newt Gunray is still here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why? That's what I'm saying, bro. These guys have like... <laughs> Why didn't they leave? Hey, you know what? They like, got a whole galaxy to If our in. Anakin would have been like, man, you should have been dead a long time ago. Like, yeah. be happy you've lasted yeah. this long. But I, I don't know. I kind of disagree. I thought it was kind of cool. I thought the scene was... I liked was, it. Yeah. I think the scene was pretty cool. Especially... No, you you know what? It well, starts off the coolest, where he walks in and just really shuts cool. the door. Yeah. Then and, we, and it then zooms we, into his like face, right? And his eyes are fucking like glowing yellow. And it's but like, yeah. then we really cut cool. back to it, and it the blocking is so it's so yeah. terrible yeah. that he's like cutting people, and there's like a dude standing over here, like I don't <laughs> in he, the frame. Like, is he like he's he's literally there's literally a guy in the background just sipping a Starbucks. You like, see like a boom oh, mic. What's going on here, guys? <laughs> like, do you guys, are you guys still fighting or what's up? Anyway, uh, Yoda and Obi-Wan fight their way into the temple while a special Senate meeting has been called, during which the Chancellor tells everyone the Jedi uprising has been quashed. Uh, the remaining Jedi will be hunted down and defeated. And then Obi-Wan and Yoda uh, just discover the dead younglings were, uh, were killed by a lightsaber. And who could have done that? And everyone's like, Anakin. Anakin definitely did this. Like, they is there know. any doubt that anyone? Anyway, doesn't they know. Matter. They know. Uh, they fucking know. Yeah. I mean, their next thing is to go look at the recording, and then yeah. they see Anakin. Meanwhile, do that. Anakin is slaughtering everyone back on Mustafar, and it's somehow not scary. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, it, it takes so long. Like the fact so that they could cut back, and there's still a dude being like, "No," you know, yeah. it's just like, "Oh, all right." Back in the Senate. I mean, it, we didn't need to see it. We needed no. to see him walk in and go, and the door yeah, shut. Yeah, and that would have been great. And that's cool. Yeah. But instead, George is like, "Oh no, we got to go back." And well, they already did that with the kids, stuff. though. They did that with the younglings. I'm sure if they did that, we'd be like, and we get another scene where we don't see Anakin be evil. You That's know. a good point. Yeah. Uh, back on the Senate, Padme and Jimmy Smith watch as the Chancellor tells everyone that in order to ensure a safe and secure society, the Republic will now be reorganized into the first ever galactic empire. And Padme continues to literally do nothing. But she does say, so this is how liberty dies, with thunderous applause. And Jimmy Smith is like, we probably we're senators. We could have maybe stopped this, but what you were again? People are stoked about it too. Yeah, people are really excited. Weird. Which is weird. Jar Jar Binks is just fucking losing it. He's losing his mind, bro. Like, oh, Lisa, uh, happy. <laughs> and this is this is another sad part about this, right? They make they, they introduce this element that they have to stop this thing from the the signal from being put out. Otherwise, all the Jedi get killed. Which would have been really cool, right? Like, imagine the third act of this movie was Yoda ha and and Obi Wan having to fight their way back into the Jedi Temple. In order to turn the signal off to save what remaining Jedi there are, but instead it just cuts and Yoda's like, oh, "It's gonna take him a while to figure that one out." You want to get and Starbucks? Like, also, like, why add that line of like, "It'll take him a long time to like undo this"? It's like, well, so they can undo it? Yeah, but also, yeah, all the Jedi are already dead. What's the point of There's this? There's a bunch of Jedi that haven't died. Are there? Yeah, they got everything. Are there? Fallen Order. Okay. Yeah, Whole I think game I, about it. No, I think that line Maybe. is just uh, exposition for yeah. the audience, so we could be like, "Oh, they are safe." Yeah, you know, like that's oh, Obi Wan, Yoda. They both survived the, the attack. That's it. Oh, that's it that you know of. No, we pretty much know. That's it. We've seen literally twenty years into the future, and there's no more Jedi left. Remember they're that? How we already watched those movies, and there's no Jedi left. So everything they're doing in this, because we've literally already seen those movies, we know there's no tension whatsoever. All the rest of the Jedi are saved, but there are none left. Why the fuck did I just come here? I don't know. Why is anyone doing any of this shit? Uh, oh, you came here so you can fight Lord Sidious, which is happening in a second. Uh, then he the watches this little crawling out of events. God, he pu pulls an Andy Dufresne <laughs> scene where it's like his face. I love it so much, so dude. So funny. And also him, him breathing. <laughs> yeah. Then they watch the security footage of Anakin killing everyone, and he can't believe it's Anakin because he's like his little brother, and he can't. Uh, but and then he's like, I can't kill him, but I I have to go up to the Emperor. And Yoda's like, No, you gotta go kill Anakin. He's not Anakin anymore. And, and Obi Wan's like, Okay, uh, so I'll find him then. Uh, Obi Wan, think hard. Yeah. Is there any way he could be? He's like, Oh, he does have a wife. Yeah. That I've kind of neglected to tell everyone about. But so like, I guess I'll go. Does he know at this her. point that he's married to Padme and they're still together? I assume that he did. Obi Wan. Yeah. Don't they have a yeah. moment? When Obi Wan's talking with her, that's, about, tells, like, that's about to happen. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's about to happen now. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think he, we've not. This is the audience. We've been given no. I don't think. I think that that's him finding out. Yeah. Yeah, but, but like he, he why must have would thought. so so they've been keeping their relationship secret from everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And again, granted, I don't think it's that big of a leap in logic to know like your best friend's dating someone, even though they didn't tell you they were dating, because mm -hmm. it's like always completely yeah. obvious. But the audience doesn't know, Obi-Wan knows, that Padme and Anakin are still in contact with each other. So why would he Wait, go to yeah, Padme? Yeah, no, no, no. 
the audience does know because the last time Padme and Anakin interacted, Anakin was like, hey, be cool. Um, they're rebelling and we're handling it though, right? But we have never seen a scene where Obi-Wan goes, hey, I know you're dating Padme, uh, is what I'm saying. We, I don't think we saw that in the movie. Earlier you guys were saying like everyone knows that they were together. Well, no, but we ne have never seen that. No, I understand. We're just making that but leap it, in logic. That, but that like, yeah, I mean, but I, you guys were acting like it was heavily implied. We're splitting hairs. Sure. Anyway, he goes to Padme because that's the next natural step in, in this uh, in this anyway. And Padme he tells Anakin Padme that Anakin has turned to the dark side. He's seen security footage of, A of Anakin killing children and Padme and Padme acts like this is completely out of character. This is shocking. Why would he I don't believe you is what she says. No he way would he's never, never kill children. Only the Except sand for the people. time that he admitted to yeah. me. That he killed children. To which I would have been like, oh, you don't believe me? Here's the fucking security footage of him <laughs> killing children. But she's like, I won't help you at all. And he goes, okay. And then leaves. Shout my her, son, though. My son would never do that in school. Exactly. <laughs> Even is. though, I mean, I get that Padme knows secretly that, that Anakin has done this and wants to go confront him himself. But this is so poorly done. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on. Fuck you fucking know. Like, you know he's a psychopath, right? Uh, anyway. But that was an act, right? Like, that was her pretending... Yes. Be like, oh, no idea. I'm going to go fucking talk to him directly. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to go to this fucking lava planet. Uh, Nine months see. pregnant. Yeah. But. Yeah. She's like, I'm Fabriglass. Fabriglass. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, Obi-Wan tells Padme all the events that have happened up to this point, including the chance of being the Sith Lord, just in case anyone who was watching this movie didn't understand what was going on. He just recaps the entire story for her right here. And then he asks Padme to help uh, him find Anakin, but she tells him no, because he's her baby mama. And instead of uh, pressing her for the answer, he just leaves. Uh, Padme takes yeah, off plan. Uh, to confront Anakin, and Obi-Wan stows away in her ship in a little cupboard. And we're like, oh, good on you, Obi-Wan. You're actually outsmarting people in this. Uh, and then City... Sidious orders Anakin to send an order to the Trade Federation shutting down all of the droids because I guess they can go now chill with the bug army that we never saw again. <laughs> Why would you shut down the droids? It's another army at your disposal. Shut down the droids? You now... Never mind. Because he's still manipulating the Galactic Empire's Senate. Yeah, he needs like everybody Remember on the, their side. So oh, like, I see. So we Senate, have to shut the army down because they are because the war's over. Right. Yeah. Officially got the it. Senate is still in existence up until the end. Uh, or I think the Senate's the, always in existence. It, no, no it, it, they the destroy. Yeah. 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 No, start somewhere in the start of the new. There's, hope, there's a like, great. Yeah. Oh, that right. They have the throwaway yeah. line where he's like, he's officially dissolved the Senate. Right. He is now the emperor. All that stuff. That's there's right. a great cut towards the, uh, the the sort of start of this fight or whatever that we retweeted. From a kind of funny best friend that was like, please talk about this. And it was, it's Obi-Wan putting his hand on on Padme as she's on the ground to make sure she's alive or whatever. Right. But it's clearly just a still of Padme and a green screened hand. To, like, Wait, really? Yeah, touching the head of Padme. And you could tell it's like just a still image of Padme that the hand is kind of making it Psychotic. look like because like the shadows just don't cast correctly at all. It's really badly done, man. It's it's impressive. Oh, <laughs> it's impressive how bad it is. One thing that I do like about this movie more so than the first two was I feel like the designs of the ships are her ship is dope. A very nice blend of the the ships that we know from like the good guys and bad guys from the original trilogy where it's like you can see the tie fighter where it came you can see the yeah. ATATs you can see the X wings you, you can see, see the star stuff, destroyers but it's star destroyers That's but it's all example. elements of it yeah and you can totally understand like where that jump to where we go and I think that's really rad well I think I, I always remember one of the criticisms being that like it seems like oh that's fucking hilarious that is so funny um I'm gonna send that to Bear yeah. <laughs> I, I do, but it does. Obviously, because the technology has come so far and they can do much more with it, the the big criticism of the, the prequels is that the technology seems like it's way more advanced here than it is in the original trilogy. But I've always liked the response of, like, that's true when it comes to the Rebellion, but the Rebellion doesn't have a real... Like, they're pulling together sh whatever ships they can to, to make this mm -hmm. army happen. And the Empire has these cool, really structured... Yeah. <laughs> this is, is from Great Brit Tom... Uh, Tom Caswell on Twitter. You have to imagine hand, at this man. point. You have to imagine at this point. Natalie Portman was like, "I am contractually obligated to be in this film. I will do as little as humanly possible to make this happen." Yeah, and 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 in when there's motion, when he lifts the hand, like the shadows don't like 
They stay with around her head. Like it's, yeah. just, it's just a drop shadow <laughs> effect. You apply an after <laughs> yeah. effect. You can't give the depth. Uh, let's see. Uh, Padme takes off. Obi Wan stows. Sidious orders Anakin to send. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Padme tells Anakin, and she lands on Mustafar and tells An- Anakin everything that Obi Wan told her. But Anakin just gets jealous and weird and starts flexing his power. He's more powerful than any Jedi before him. He's brought peace to the Republic. They don't have to run anymore. He can overthrow the Chancellor, and together with Padme, they can rule. And then he smiles at her, real creepy, like. And then Padme doesn't know about know him anymore. Anakin, you're breaking my heart. You're going down a path I can't follow. Uh, and he goes because of Obi Wan. And she's like, "Are you fucking like, listening to anything I'm saying?" About? And then he looks up, and Obi Wan is he's like, "There, hello, Superman, <laughs> yeah. standing with why, his big why, dick at her." Why does he look like he's in Mulan Rouge? <laughs> I don't know. He looks like he's about he to was in Mulan Rouge. <laughs> uh, and then Obi Wan is like. They start arguing. Obi Ron. Obi Ron. <laughs> and Anakin refuses Obadiah to hear Obi Ron. <laughs> and he goes, "If you're not with me, then you're my enemy." And he goes, "Only Sith deals in absolutes, except also so do the Jedi, except for Yoda." Yeah. Do and or do then, not. That's it. Yeah. There is no do problem. or do not. Yeah. Absolutes. Absolutes. Uh, then <laughs> they just say, "Fuck it." This has been this has been culminating for three films now. We gotta get it on. And it's a cool fight. I like it. It's a long fight. Yeah. And then Yoda. It's cool. I think it's cool. And then Yoda basically. Has cool con- elements. Yoda basically in the next scene confirms everything we've always thought. The fucking red guards. Useless. <laughs> what do they do? Are they even real people? I love this shot. Because it, Yoda, you know what it's though? like. Come on. You know what it's like. It's like when they when that when that like when you go to a third world like t- like dictatorship and they try to set up things to make it look like they're more powerful, but in reality they're just standees. You push them over. That's what these things are. Yoda just walks. Through. I love that. It's so cool. I that's weird. Cool too. Like that. That's yeah. the the sound and the visual yep. look really cool. But you have to imagine there's a deleted scene where Sidious is like useless. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> I imagine someone like Vince later McMahon. went and like picked up the thing and it was just liquefied inside. He just fucking just <laughs> destroyed them. Like, oh shit! <laughs> it's like meat I, I think that the entire Palpatine Yoda fight is way cooler than I remember it being. It's so. I, it's I feel well, like especially after seeing the I last movie. I hate the ending though. No, it just is. It's cool, but it also makes no sense, right? Because the way it starts is they go, "Cool, we're gonna start like two badass masters of these arts, and we're gonna throw shit at each other and electrocute each other and do all this stuff." And then they go, oh, "Well, we're tired of that. Let's go yeah. back to light." Saber fighting. Yeah, but like, and why? also but doesn't the, it end with them throwing around the Senate? No, it, like, it ends with them, yeah, like throwing shit down and then yeah, Yoda and falls him being like, and I'm stuff. overwhelmed by it's yeah. like, why? And like why are you just, overwhelmed? It just kind of ends where uh Sidious is like in a vulnerable state where he's like hanging off one of the things. He's like, hey! and Yoda just kind of leaves and he the next line he says is, I have failed. And it's like you had yeah. like you had a an opportunity yeah. right there. What the f- throw your wow. lightsaber like do anything? <laughs> like, spear. Yeah, I mean, him. you really think that like let's just put it this way. This is your last ditch effort to save everything you know, and you're Yoda. You would, I mean, if it were me and I were the head of this Jedi Council and all of my friends just got killed, I'd be like, I have nothing to live for. I, I sh- I'm either gonna beat this guy or die trying, or go to a swamp, or. Forever. To Crawl through energy. a little tiny thing, call my buddy Jimmy Smith to have me come pick me up in his dope ass pimp Cadillac, and then go into exile, which is what he does. Yeah. And he says Great so option. much. Great option. What a bitch. He uh, just th- but ran the away. one thing I thought Man. was weird to set off the fight was some of the dialogue with Palpatine and Yoda, where he like literally says, My my little green friend. <laughs> and I'm like, this just feels so out of place. Like, don't reference him being yeah. green. Like, don't, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. We're he supposed is, to just think that it's okay that he's green, not that it's weird that he's green. Here's the thing. It's still fucking cool. And, like, did we ever, ever imagine that we would get a fucking fight with Sidious and Yoda? Yeah, we knew that no. was going to happen. No, we didn't. No right after fucking he fought way. Deku, we were like, no, he's going to fight. No way. <laughs> after he fought Deku. No way. I get, no one saw that fucking coming, and I'm so happy it happened. I disagree so um, hard. Especially after two? Yeah, we did. They got to uh, step it up. They yeah. got to end it. They Either way, it together. he gets in Jimmy Smith's pimp ride. And the, the fucking tops down, and they're just cruising. And everything's cool. Bitch and down, he's like, I would. He's like, I failed, <laughs> so I'm going into uh, into exile. And Jimmy Smith's like, or we could just rendezvous with the rest of my fleet and hey man, take it uh, to this guy again. Rebellion. We're about to start it. Yeah. Uh, don't. It's going to take a little bit to get there, but we could really use you. We could, like, you and Obi General Obi-Wan Kenobi could be really invaluable assets. And Yoda's like, no. And Jimmy Smith's like, <laughs> okay. And Jimmy Smith's like, but, like... You're Yoda. Yeah. And you got at least a hundred years more of life, right? But like 
Okay, cool. You know what? You just go on vacation. You've earned it. Whatever. Uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan fight over some lava. And then Obi-Wan admits to having... real lava, guys. Uh, the images of the volcanic eruption on Mustafar was real footage of Mount Etna in Italy, which was erupting at the time of production. Hmm. I wonder how much hmm. that cost. Our soul is what it costs. Then they argue some more, and Anakin thinks, and Obi-Wan admits that. He's like, I failed you, Anakin. And then they argue some more, and Anakin thinks he's right, and Obi-Wan thinks he's right. And then Anakin says, this is the end for you, my master. And then they fight on the same lava boat, which is cool. Uh, and then Obi-Wan flips <laughs> to the high ground, and it's endgame. It's no, over. before that, before that, though, I love, I love the back and forth of... They they are evil. Well, in my opinion, Obi Wan, if you would, you know, if you don't mind me telling you what my opinion is, because from my point of view, you are the evil one. Like it's just such a like so the, so many words yeah. to get to like nothing. From my point of view, Obi Wan, you are the evil one. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, it's like but like, oh, you fuck George kids. Lucas. That's some deep shit, yeah, man. That's damn, some deep bro. shit. <laughs> it, it was like Perd Hapley from Parks and Rec. Yeah, like the, really the sentence I'm gonna say right now yeah. is now ending. And then Obi-Wan flips to the high ground, and it's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. I am, nothing you can do. Just am, like we learned in episode one, having yep. the high ground, you, you can't You're fucked. Lose. You I'm a lose. solid 10 feet up a hill from you. You're fucked. <laughs> you are fucked, bro. This is, you don't know this because you're not a master yet, but this is the fucking last thing they teach you before you become a master. Get 10 feet higher. Like Anakin just starts walking up like, oh, fuck, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> I but like, yeah, if he had just jumped like sideways, you know? Or if he had just come onto the shore. Because he was so far, he could have just been like, he could have forced pulled his little boat on and then just stepped off onto the shore. But like, or we could just keep fighting, bro. I, I'm not you're, so you're upset only a little with bit the... With, with the exception of it not having been set up at all. Or just jump parallel to where he is. <laughs> like, yeah. Just somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or you go like this. No, I'm just we've seen these guys. We've seen, me. we've seen these guys. Well, jump yeah, that, everywhere. that's the other thing. Like, the fight would just have been over. Like, all right, well, I'm going to keep riding this down there. I guess we'll yeah. meet somewhere else. Like, yeah. we'll meet somewhere else and fight. Because, like, can't we're, st we're still winning. Like, my side is still totally yeah. winning. The city is coming. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he goes, You underestimate my power. And he goes, Don't try it. And he goes, well, I'm going to try it. And so he flips and then gets his legs cut off. And arms. In the and exact arms. way I wanted Obi he gets or everything uh, cut off. to kill Obi-Wan. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow he cuts everything off. All of his limbs are cut off in one foul swoop. In one stroke. Fingers are everywhere. Everything. Toes. Every <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, then he just fucking and leaves then, him oh, to no, slowly no, no, no. Before, burn to death. He looks at him and says, you were my brother, Anakin. I loved you. No, he didn't. Say it how he said it, Nick. You were my brother, Anakin. I loved you. <laughs> Thank you. Like, really? Did you? I like that Anakin was like, D I told you so many times, I saw you like a father. Uh, then yeah. Anakin I I, I starts to give credit where credit's due. I like Ewan's performance. No, so, I, no. I'm not a but, fan but of that. But here's the problem build, with this They scene. don't build up to it. I like no, that. I like yeah, the performance. I, I like it. I'm down with the performance. It just, yeah, it's like So, okay. Empty. Tim, Tim let's, let's, let's do some role playing okay, here. Okay, right? let's go. You and I have been friends for a very long time. We started mm -hmm. business together. Everyone's mm -hmm. happy. Yada, yada, yada. It's all I would you betrayed me. Yes. Okay, but I still love you. Uh -huh. I just admitted as much. You were my brother. I loved you. And I probably still have some feelings for you. But you were slowly now lighting on fire mm -hmm. and you were screaming bloody fucking murder. <laughs> and what am I going to do? I have two options. One, mercy kill, kill you as a mercy kill. And mm -hmm. also kind of has the added benefit of knowing, knowing, that, you're dead. knowing that you're fucking dead and yeah. you're not going to come back to kill me. Or slowly walk away like a Bond villain, yeah. thus assuring and take that your, you're going to get out. And take his weapon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, make sure he takes his weapon. I'm just gonna take that. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird, what a weird way to end it. I mean, they were like, we're running out of runtime. Uh, we gotta get a couple things in place. We gotta get him. To, we gotta get him to Darth Vader. We yeah. have to see the element. Anyway, dumb. Do you, can you imagine the moment he found out? Oh fuck! Do you, do you hear Darth Vader still alive? And we was like. Oh, oh but, I knew I forgot yeah. something. Oh, oh wow, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> like he was really burned. No way. Yeah. So Are Anakin, you sure? It was like the same dude. <laughs> and then Anakin. So Anakin goes back to the ship, and Padme, who oh, I forgot to mention that uh, he force choked Padme the fuck out yeah. earlier. But which, it really didn't seem that bad. No, it doesn't. But she's like out of it. She's like I've never had that. So many elements here. One, nine months pregnant. So yeah. even not that bad. Really bad. Two, where the fuck did this come from that he would choke her? I don't know. I don't care how also, angry he is. She wasn't that. I, like I watched back. I was like, was she pregnant? Because I don't think she, the bump was that big. They, no, the she gets really big. Was pretty but... poor, but you. Did, he, she does have the, the last bump. moment with you, twins. Like, Nine months pregnant with twins. <laughs> 
She's like a fucking size four still. Back on the ship, Padme asks if Anakin's all right. And Obi-Wan's like, yeah, we just went to a barbecue. Uh, Sidious lands. <laughs> that was good, Nick. Sidious that lands on good. Mustafar and collects what's left of Anakin, who is somehow still alive. Obi-Wan meets up with Jimmy Smith, and together they take Padme to the medical center, where, despite being in perfect health, she's dying because she's lost the will to live. If we don't act fast, we'll lose the babies, too. And then someone goes, babies? And yeah, Obi-Wan goes, yeah, yeah, she's pregnant with twins. Meanwhile, on Coruscant, Anakin is having an operation of his own to become a badass. Padme names the it twins. so painful. <laughs> yeah. Padme names the twins Luke and Leia while Vader gets the finishing touches and we hear him breathe for the first time. The mask goes on. We... And that's as Padme is dying, which yeah. is cool. It is. It is cool. Yeah, it would have been cool. She gave up the will to live. Fucking dumb. This might be the stupidest so decision. So dumb. That and Anakin being just born of the Force. The two dumbest fucking decisions they could have possibly made. Well, it's really, it's really sad too because you're like, we didn't. It's believable that she would have been killed or died later. Why did we have to have her die now? And we know we have that line where Luke goes, "Do you remember anything about your mother?" And she goes, "Yeah, not much. But she died when I was really young, but I do remember her." And so it's like, why would you even have her die? Like, she's not going back to Anakin. We would have been so much crazier for yeah, her. Like, they, I have these two kids, and this guy's a fucking nightmare. But they wouldn't I have, have to run away from up. him now. They wouldn't have split them up, right? Well, we could have. They could have split them up. Like I'm saying, they didn't have to explain why they got split up. She could have just had them named Luke and Leia, thing. and that would have been it. They did. The way George Lucas makes these movies, he's like, if I don't fucking explain right. this, no one will understand. So Padme names the twins Luke and Leia while Vader gets finished touches. And then with her dying breath, Padme tells Obi-Wan that they're still good in Anakin, despite every single evidence to the contrary. And Obi-Wan's like, sure, <laughs> whatever. Just hurry up and know. die. So we can get he away. doesn't believe that. Nope. Luke believes yeah, that. Exactly. You know, He literally was just like... Yeah, she's super the wrong. The youngling. Not only that, but we know he doesn't believe it because at no point in the trilogy when before he dies does he go, hey, they're still good in no. Anakin. No, no, he's like, hey, the fucking guy's evil. Uh, Sidious speaks to Vader. We need to, to bring this pregnant woman to lay down somewhere. Luke, lay it down there. And it's like, that's what I'll call my kids. Yeah. Because I'm solo. Like Luke over I'm there alone. and Leia, that one down there. You don't there. have to explain it. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> like <laughs> Luke over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, really quick good. though. I <laughs> love that Nick's mind is like, that's so good. I want to, I want to make sure people get I'm it. I'm gonna take credit Let for that. Me one. Expand upon this. Don't they yeah. retcon the thing where uh, it's really Palpatine killing Padme? Like through the force or some shit. Oh, there's theories. Yeah, yeah. there's theories. I'm uh, sure they do in the. They, I'm sure they do in the comics. Just like yeah. the the whole Anakin being born of the force. Like that stuff is kind of retcon oh, later on. We, we it was shit. stupid when it happened in the movie. So yeah. then, so here's what happens next. Sidious speaks to Vader for the first time as he like lifts him up. Right. And, and Vader asks, Padme, what happened to Padme? Why is the voice immediately uh, fucking James Earl Jones? I don't know. Like, and then Sidious, later, man. Sidious says, hey, in your anger, you accidentally killed her. Now, what if she hadn't died? How does he know she died? Doesn't he matter. doesn't know. It doesn't fucking matter. He doesn't know. It does matter. Because what if she had fucking lived? And she would, wouldn't he, have gone back to him. He'd have been like, uh-oh, I lied to him. And then Vader would be like, wait, she's not dead? That could have been a big deal. You take it all, I'm just saying, big gamble by saying you yeah. killed her, right? Big gamble. But it, it, it pays off because Vader breaks off like fucking off. Frankenstein and screams, hello. And then the whole room starts to like crumble around him, which I actually would have been a really cool effect. Want. It's also weird <laughs> seeing like a, a thinner Vader. Yeah. Yeah. Like a little sleeper. Uh, a, a friend, of, I forget who, but they would, they always said that the scene would have been so much cooler and more in character for Vader if it wasn't the cringy like no, but if he just like closed his fist and everything, just like no sound or anything, just all the machines and stuff like broke totally. down. Yeah. Like, that would yeah. have been cool. I, I, the one part I liked about this scene was the use of sound design and the shot of his helmet actually coming on for the first time, where it's like really quiet and then you hear the. And, you see and the then smoke. you hear the smoke and you hear the breathing. It's like, that was cool, but yeah. then there was a lot no, more. No, you know what? Oh, my God, I am a liar. I did see this in theaters. Because <laughs> I remember that scene in theaters. And everyone laughing. Good job, yeah. Andy. Uh, <laughs> Yoda orders the twins to be split up for their own safety, and Jimmy Smith offers to take the girl to raise with his wife on Alderaan. And the boy... On Alderaan, which makes sense because you're like, oh, that's cool. Totally. She gets a new last name, total new identity. Nobody knows that 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 it's her, except that no one remembers her, his wife being pregnant or whatever. And Jimmy Smith's very, very, very present in the Senate, and everyone's like, "Where'd you get that kid from?" That's weird. Well, I mean, um, he just said he adopted a girl. Like, that's he, fair. You know, he's like, "We were thinking about adopting." Yeah, it's a big galaxy. I don't want the boy though. I want to make that clear. Yeah, don't want the boy. Just the girl. I don't want the boy. Uh, but the boy, let's hide him. This is the genius. Where? The masterstroke. Where? Mm -hmm. Plain mm -hmm. sight. Yes. Right. 
what if we took this kid that no one's supposed to know about and put him in the home of the guy that wants him back? And he's already been there, where his family and his lineage and his last name, all that also, stuff's there. Also, are they that. his family? Like, right, here's, he's the stepbrother, right? Mm, that wasn't, what's uh, Shmi's do- son, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it's all So it's just like, marriage. really, it's this family that bought Loose ties. Shmi as a slave. Mm. Which makes sense, right? he fell in love with her, married her, and it was like, okay, that's the family that is now adopting this kid. Okay, sure. cool. And they seem real happy about it, even though they're like, wait a minute, you want us to take this kid in at our own peril. And if, if I'm sure if this won't get us killed. Darth Vader finds out about it, it could lead to us being dead. Cool. Here's what we should do. We're gonna rename this kid. No, 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 no. His last name has to be Skywalker. Why? Why would his my last name's not Skywalker? We've already established I am not a part of this family. It's Ben Smith, is what I am. How about we call him Luke Smith? I don't know. It's gotta be Skywalker. Here, okay. Oh, cool. Hear me. Give me the baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that is an insane fucking choice. And then, oh, what are, what are the droids up to? Bonkers. Oh, well, by the way, the droids, we got to just wipe their memories. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay but only okay. C3PO's for some reason. Well, R2 R2 doesn't talk. Yeah. C3PO right. keeps being like, where's but, Anakin? Right, where's Anakin? The understand. guy who but everybody understands R2. Everybody understands R2. It's so weird. And then but, we see a dope shot of Vader joining the Emperor on the bridge of a newly made Star Destroyer for the first time. And it looks exactly like <laughs> the ones we've seen before. Remember those we've seen before? No. These are them. These are the ones we've seen before. Uh, and then over on Tatooine, uh, Owen... Uh, we see the, uh, death, the building of the Death Star, which a lot of people give shit. I think is cool. Yeah, Wait. this is a cool moment. What, what happens? It's terrible. Where they're seeing the building of the, the Death Star. Owen is seeing the building of the Death Star. I think no, we no, see no. CGI yeah. Tarkin, too. When they're on the yeah, bridge, they yeah, look yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's so cool. Uh, right, cool. Let's see. Jimmy Smith uh, flies to Alderaan and introduces Jon Snow to his wife. And then <laughs> uh, over on Tatooine, Obi-Wan drops off Luke to Owen and Beru, who seem... Really happy that this whole thing is, oh, look at that. We've always wanted one of these little bundles of joy. And they look out over the sunset as they smile, not knowing that one day they'll be burned alive. <laughs> the yeah. end. Honestly, the, the, <laughs> the worst part of this end is, yes, yeah, it's burned alive right there. Um, but the music is so lame. Yeah. And like it's like yep. such a bad interpretation of the theme. And this is supposed to swell us with emotion and yeah. feeling, even if you don't like what's going on. That's such an easy win. And we're recreating that fucking scene. Because at the time we thought this was it, and and exactly, and, and then it just goes to the and you're like, all right, turn this shit off. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's, I'm it's the same out. pose. It's looking at the two fucking suns, and there's no music. That's cool. <laughs> it was such a loss. Such yeah. a loss, man. It, you're right. It was a very easy win. Episode one, best musical transition. I'm giving it. All right, so here we are. Uh, let's do the fucking haiku <laughs> review. Seven syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. These movies are done. Let's move the fuck on. Which way is this next? Yeah. Uh, Party McFly says, oh, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form. Uh, Party McFly says, who was the phantom? Attack of the clones, lame name. Sith, revenge for what? (laughs) (laughs) Then taking over. That's a really strong point. Uh, Let's see. Andy Max says, you are my brother. We see Vader's choking hand. Twins got no mother. No, oh, Vader's choking hand. That's oh, a bag- little ragu bagu mm-hmm. thing. Uh, Ignacio Rojas coming in fucking hot. Yeah, lit right there. Best of the series. You know it to be true. Search your feelings, people. What? That was good. If There's you're no talking the series of prequels, he, then he, maybe. I think yeah, he needs yeah. the prequels. Yeah, sure. I hope so. There's I hope no so. There's no way. Yeah. Sne- Sneecher says, General Grievous went out like a little bitch. He deserved better. I don't know. I don't know what he did. He went out like a motherfucking badass. Dude. Well, that is true. <laughs> That's fucking the most flame coming ever. out of his eyeballs. <laughs> the most metal. <laughs> You're still in costume? Like, pops her head in. Jesus Christ. She is inside Grievous Man, right now. she fits Wait, where, where, where do we get that, that like child's that? fucking I drunkenly small ordered it. I, I drunk it. Costume. It fits her perfectly. What do you mean small? It fits perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't see the legs. Let's see it again. Let's see it again. I didn't see the legs. Okay. Get your body right. <laughs> I love it. Costume. I love it. Yeah, it's not great. Hey, it's Don't pretty cool, it. though. Break out of that yeah. thing. Okay. Um, Lucas. Put the mask on, though, if you're going to come on set next time. Lucas Kerr <laughs> says. <laughs> and cough, please. Execute order 6 6. Younglings hiding, shitting bricks. Killed by laser stick. <laughs> oh, that's that good. Close. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Wait, who was that? That was Lucas Kern. Oh, well. Uh, 
And then let's go Tensa. I'll, I'll let you read this one, Andy. Long live the Empire. Padme is so heartbroken. Anakin, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> All right, Ragu Bagu. Hey guys, what's up? I'm the host of this series of Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys. I'm joined by all of my co-hosts, everybody in the god dang room, and we are ranking the bad guys of the Star Wars universe. Right now the rankings are, oh my god, who? what did I write for the last one? Oh, no. <laughs> Rank whatever, sixth or fifth. Dooku, Django, Annie, CG, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we ranked the CG as really, really bad. Yeah, I think Lucas right. has also just become a villain in this whole thing. Yeah, gotcha. Wrong. He really has. Maui, Palpatine, Tark Vader, Vader's Choking Hand, and number one is Bubble Tea, which is uh, Boba Fett and, and Palpatine. Where do we rank? This is Palpatine and Vader? Yeah, mm -hmm. and Anakin, I would imagine, because Anakin's well, kind of the bad guy. Guys, there, no. there were heroes on both sides. There were heroes on both sides. Also, but ev there's evil everywhere. Which means there's <laughs> villains on both sides. I'd say yeah. the Jedi Council because they're all so fucking dumb. Yeah. Mace Windu. Like, they brought this upon themselves. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out there. Please do. Now, the this entire podcast series is because of Tim. So Ooh. maybe Ooh. Tim is the ultimate bad guy wow. yeah. on this list for I making like us that. watch these prequels and making me cry with I think what could have been. I think we should save that to see if the last movie is terrible. Oh, good point, Sam. Yeah. You might rank now number does, one, but for now, you're safe. Now, does <laughs> Grievous bring up Vader? Like, d does he bring Vader? And no, he sure Grievous? doesn't. No. He sure doesn't. <laughs> Again, Grievous. <laughs> Grievous is so hilariously stupid. <laughs> just so, what a stupid He's character. Bad. <laughs> that I just, I mean, like, you can't tell if this guy's serious or, or kidding How much around. How screen time did he get? Ten minutes? Five minutes, maybe? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, oh I mean, it's, it, I'm this, sure I was expecting her to pop choice. in be like 17 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so 14 have, minutes and 18 seconds. So we have Sidious, Dooku, Anakin. Dooku's not a bad guy in this. And Grievous. Yeah, he is. Dooku's Dooku? Dooku? He's yeah. decapitated. He, he kidnaps he loses the Chancellor. Very quickly. He's still a pawn of the Chancellor. He broke so Obi-Wan's hip. <laughs> mm, yeah. I think it, it should be Sidious and Vader. I think that that's... Sure, let's go with that. And I'll Wait, put well, him on, dead fucking I have last. a question about Dooku, because I've always understood it differently. Dooku didn't capture... Palpatine. No, no, it that was, was grievous. A, that was a grievous. That was a plan. But Dooku yeah. was hanging out with. Grievous. Well, nobody captured Palpatine. Yeah. Palpatine Dooku, captured himself. Dooku, I think, is grievous... aware that Palpatine is Sidious, right? Yeah. Dooku is okay. Sidious. Okay. Is cool. Padawan. Yeah. Is, is yeah. his uh, yeah. apprentice. Sidious is, but it, does he know that Palpatine's the same Pretty guy? Sure he yeah. he okay. must fucking okay, cool. know. He's, good. The, the, the same. he's the one who said it in two, where he's like, oh, like the like someone in the Sith has taken over the the galaxy essentially, and y'all. Did it like it all happened? Which was a lie because he was like, "Oh, I'm trying to fight against that," but really, yeah, yeah. He was the, really, the whole first scene was just a red herring to get the Senate to think that there was worse consequences. I'm gonna yeah. say last. Whatever the bad guy in this movie is, I'm. Going I'll, to I'll say agree last. with you just to end this. So right. you're gonna put them last below, Dooku, Django, yeah, Anakin. Fuck. You know what? No, no. second, second, you're right. second, second to last. Yeah. Second I'll to agree last. With that because yeah. I want it to end. Grievous isn't even in it. Yeah, he's not even a part of it. He's not even a part of it. <laughs> Useless. Because a lot of people say he's a hero. Uh, heroes on both sides. Heroes Sidious, on both sides. Sidious and Vader? Yeah. Also, it's like it's kind of fucked up to rank someone with lung cancer. You know what I mean? Like, don't put him on the list. Uh, yeah. The guy's dying of lung cancer. I put so Sidious Vaxxer, sure. and that's what it's staying as. Can there you put go. three there at the go. end so that we like? Oh, have yeah. some now it's time to rank the Star Wars universe. Okay, cool. The current rankings are as follows: Number one, The Empire Strikes Back. Number two, A New Hope. Number three, Return of the Jedi. Number four, Phantom Menace. Number five, Attack of the Clones. This is barely number four. Barely. Barely number four. Yeah. I'm, I'm like I, I again going into this, I thought that it was like miles better than all the other it's movies. Not. And and it's still bad, but I, I do still kind of barely, almost slightly tiny amount enjoy tiny minuscule the the, the, the final sequences, the whole betrayal and all that mm. shit. But man, a lot of everything leading up to those moments. I'm just thinking, like, holy shit, this is equally as bad as Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace. There's a part during the final lightsaber battle where they're standing uh, before they go out onto the above the lava, not when they're floating on the lava, but before where they just spin, spin each other's spin lightsabers at each other. That's what this movie is. It's just <laughs> two assholes spinning lightsabers <laughs> at each other and not actually making contact with anything. Sometimes relevant. one asshole spinning lightsabers, yeah. two lightsabers. <laughs> also, at a certain point, I'd be like, "Hey guys, I get it." Uh, it's it's really fun to twirl your lightsaber like that, but let's never fucking do that again. Because if I see one more goddamn Jedi doing that, I'm just I'm gonna lose my shit on you. Stop it. Yeah, it's a fucking laser sword. Barrett, 
What are, what are your thoughts on this? I still really enjoy this movie. I All of your criticisms are totally fair. Like, I have criticisms of it. General Grievous, just terrible, terrible character in this movie. <laughs> in the show, great. Um, but the actual fundamental, like, what this movie is, act by act, is what this trilogy should have been. First act, it's a kind of fun ad- space adventure where they're going on a mission and you see them like kind of build a friendship and that's what the entire first movie should have been. And the second movie should have been like this questioning. They Obi-Wan and Anakin get separated and they're on their own like missions and that's where like Anakin kind of gets taken over by the dark side. And that at the end of the second movie should have been where he turns and the entire third movie should have been about like Obi-Wan's struggle to go off and face Anakin. And that's like there are uh, there was... R- God damn. We've said throughout... Someone like, really likes Grievous, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've said throughout the last three movies, like, there's cool ideas here, and there's little hints, and this is the one that had the most, I would say, I of fundamentally what this story should have been, and that's why I still really enjoy it. I really enjoy Ewan McGregor in this movie. Like, they're... Again, it's not great. It's bar- It's not even good. It's... I think it's a f- okay movie. A lot of there's a lot of good concepts. A lot yeah, of good concepts. Exactly. My, my my like my thing with it though is like, shit, man. I liked the pod race. I liked Maul a lot. Those those elements to me are cooler than anything in this movie. Like still somehow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just feel like this one had more that I enjoyed. Mm. I didn't enjoy it as much as those elements, but more overall. But yeah. still, it's it's number four. All right. Does anybody? Uh, who thinks it's better just than made an executive decision on that? Yeah, well, what do you think, Nick? Um, I, I mean, it's it's we're splitting hairs. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. These are they're they're all just utterly terrible with some interesting elements sprinkled in there. How are there still Star Wars fans? Like, I, after I mean, this right? it's so crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> I mean, they did I have mean, to like. like we of, still love Star Wars. <laughs> they did have to like dial it back for a couple of years, right? Like after this movie, I don't feel like we really got to see a lot of stuff until 2008 when the Clone Wars started, right? Like, there was, there's definitely more like, all right, fuck, we really fucked this up. We gotta, like, let go. There's video games in that. My dream, right? Uh, What's your uh, dream, Andy? Fucking your dream. Emperor of the World, right? Uh, I was gonna say President Trump, but just any any le- war leader puts up a giant men in black light, red light, right? <laughs> It zaps yep. all of my memories. Oh my god, it's so And cool. then they recreate all of the tri- the prequel trilogy, I like know, yeah. with yeah. good so storytelling, with good with good characters, with au- with awesome actors, but right? Why like not, imagine why if not they just got recreate all of it. Why not just be like, hey, Star Wars, good idea, good concept. Four, five, and six are great, but like no, but the original trilogy is good. Why change that? I mean, like the I prequels, just, like, the, they're so fundamentally terrible. Yeah. Like uh, every part of them is so bad. So that I think, bad. Like, uh, can you imagine, Nick? If they yeah, retconned, I'd love you, that. Let me tell you, Zach Efron shirt off. How about that? No. I mean, I want that all the time. You put that next to a just, I just full want bag of really snacks. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really it. Yeah. All right, who thinks that uh, Revenge of the Sith is better than Attack of the Clones? Raise your hand. Everyone raises their hand. Who thinks better than Phantom Menace? Raise your hand. Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hand down. Yeah, I'm, Man, gonna, straight I'm gonna put my hand down too because I like Maul a lot. I thought that Barrett's hand cool. straight up. We I got fucking two of them. win. <laughs> I got two of them. Wow, that's crazy, guys. Yeah. I'm very surprised by this. It's, but it, it just sort of I just me right like now. there's Y'all so crazy. much of this Y'all movie crazy. where it's just two characters telling the audience what sh- what they should be seeing, and it's so fucking boring. But you're right. Like the end of it, you're like there are some emotional moments. Where you're like, oh, that that the uh, 66 stuff is really really sad. I don't know. I don't know. So Nick and third Andy, Nick strong. and Andy did not agree, but me, Barrett, and Kevin push it to number four. Who thinks it's better than Return of the Jedi? Raise your hand. No one raises their hand. The new ranking of the Star Wars universe is number one. <laughs> Empire. Hey, there's rules yeah, what's here. Wrong with Empire you? Strikes Back. Two, A New Hope. Three, Return of the Jedi. Four, Revenge of the Sith. Five, Phantom Menace. Six, Attack of the Clones. Um, we are going to be reviewing Episode Seven, The Force Awakens, uh, this Friday, actually, um, because we are trying to do reviews of The Mandalorian when it comes out. There are two Mandalorian episodes next week. Stay tuned for scheduling on that because we don't know exactly the times of when things are going to drop and all that, but our our plan, if it drops at midnight on Monday night going into Tuesday, would be for the Tuesday morning show to be our review of The Mandalorian. Can I ask a question? What's up, Nick? Who are you? I love you. Bye.